like this. Here we go. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we have a special guest this evening. <laughs> everybody say hi. Hi. It's the hi. Mule. And no, I don't have Ebola. It was a joke. I yeah, thought you had the clap. I'm, now, I'm not saying I don't have the clap. I'm saying I don't have Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Stinger saw my penicillin next to my bed when he was over. Well, I thought the whole thing was a joke. I didn't know if anyone else took it as a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. Rebels were the dragon. I sold it, though, man. Yeah, you did. You had I'm, me rolling, I'm bro. getting calls from <laughs> agents now. Had me rolling. Good stuff, man. And for those of you who, you know, don't understand Gallo's humor... I'm sorry for you. Life must be difficult. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. I just quite, you know, I've been in a lot of stressful situations in my life. At times, you know, ones where you get very hurt very badly or die. And you always end up with people joking around in those situations, especially just before them. The closer you are to death, the more joking goes on. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right, and the fact that they're now transferring Ebola patients outside of Africa, we need to start laughing about this shit because it's gonna. When it comes, there's gonna be nothing funny. Yeah, yeah, and that's where this stemmed from. You know, Mew and I were in a in a private chat like we normally are, and and just hanging out BS, and and uh, you know, I expressed my concerns over the Ebola situation, and. Uh, that's what started the whole ball rolling. So, you know, I hope it got your attention. And as I said, um, <laughs> it is what it is. We, we are not PC. There's another chat for you if you, you know, can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. We're not babysitting here. Yeah, and... <laughs> Somebody, I'm hoping this was a joke, right? Because somebody in the ch in the, in that particular video you posted, buddy, put up how seriously we need to clean and bleach down the bar. Wow. Now, I, me and the wife are looking at it, and we're on her phone, and I'm laughing my ass off, thinking they're in on the joke, right? Yeah. Until I read their first comment, and then I had to question. We were both looking at each other kind of like, Maybe they weren't in on it. I don't know. Right. The ones getting punked now on somebody getting a joke and just playing it straight? Because <clears throat> to call the dragon a bar, I mean a real bar, where like people are serving drinks and food and shit, is obviously don't know what the hell the dragon really is. I just think it's like Rep said, man, if you can take a joke, no. Keep moving along the line. Don't get ass hurt. Just the gym. Humor is good at times, especially like when you said, when times are rough, it's good to break a laugh. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I know that's what happens. Like I said, you know what? In, in stressful situations, that's what I've seen happen, right? And I'm sure if you talk to soldiers who were hanging out just before a battle, they're going to tell you the same thing. Lots of gallows humor going on. No doubt. If you went back a hundred years and you're in the trenches of France, lots of gallows humor going on. Why? Because you already know the futility of life, and you have to laugh at something. Cool. You know? I tried to get... Okay, here, here's a joke I tried to get Reb to do mm -hmm. on, as the lead-in. Right? What did the guy say on the way to the gallows? Uh, the guillotine, excuse me. Uh, what did the guy say on the way to the guillotine? A little off the top, please. Yep. Bum bump. Gallows humor, baby. You know, that picture that's standing up there. You know, last chance for ice cream, telling a dude about to get hung. <laughs> Gallows humor.
So, um, Mule, can you can you uh, tell us about that TV show, The Last Ship, and the premise and, and whatnot? Well, the premise is basically what we're beginning to live through now, right? Uh, an Ebola outbreak of some kind is in Africa. These people are looking for where the, the last ship is. They're looking for the original source of it that they say comes from the Antarctic. And birds picked it up from because, of course, they got to put in the global warming shit in. And uh, then, of course, mankind comes in, alters it, and it becomes a pandemic. And the, the last people alive and not sick are on this ship or uh, like it all around the world. Right? There's pockets of humanity left. If anybody wants to watch it, it's over on TNT. I only understand the premise. I haven't actually watched the show. But, I mean, what do you think we're facing here with this Ebola outbreak already? Okay, they're, they're telling us a lot less than what's really going on over in Africa. Right? And now I read in, you know, on the Internet when I can that uh, Germany's being willing to accept Ebola patients to come into Germany. Well, once that shit moves out of, Ger out of Africa... Nothing's going to stop it from spreading. Nothing. Right? And if it goes airborne, like the CDC is warning about, then we really do need to laugh because we're not going to get time to cry when it starts going fast. And if it happens in this country, don't think our government doesn't have a plan to shut everything down and not let you implement your bug out plans to leave. Right? China's already quarantined the town over shit like it. Okay, you think we're not going to do the same? Anywho, just my opinion. Everybody has them. Yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. And listen, I, I have a friend that, uh, that let's just say, works in the health industry. Um, take it for what it is. And if they're worried then I'm worried because they're they're in the know. Yeah. Well, when the CDC, you know, here's the thing we've learned over the past, since the Internet's come around, they like telegraphing their punches. They like letting you know long beforehand what, they, what they're planning on happening, right? And why do you think for the past 10 years we've had these propaganda movies and TV shows and shit like that with, you know, zombies and outbreaks and pandemics, right? You think they're not preparing people for to accept it and when it comes? That's on you, right? I am a little more tinfoil hatty. So I find it very suspicious. And then the fact that Ebola is getting out of fucking Africa when it never did before? Right. When you wouldn't live long enough to pass that shit along before. Exactly. You know, now you got a guy who, if he hadn't made a stop in fucking Nigeria, he would have been in Minnesota. I thought it was uh, Carolina, North Carolina. No, that was a different guy. The the one guy was from Minnesota who died in Nigeria of it, right? And if he hadn't gotten off the plane, if he didn't have to transfer planes in Nigeria, what would have happened? Right. I don't know. I can't tell you. I only know just the thought of it's 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 like nuclear war. It's kind of too big to think about. Yeah. Well, it's it's the the thing that that makes it scary is the fact that there's no cure. There's no vaccine, there's no nothing. Yeah, and once you get it, you got it. It's, you know, I there's what three percent chance of, of survival. You never know when you're gonna get it. Right. That's the scary part as well. Not only when you get it. So I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, Sonoran Desert Prepper was saying that they're taking the infected uh, mercenaries to the Atlanta hospital. So I mean, uh, man, it's just. I mean, every friggin' movie for the last decade has showed these types of scenarios. Apocalypse, pandemic, 
you know, doomsday, end of the world, you know, blah de blah, blah. I just took the family to go see uh, the new Planet of the Apes flick, right? Yeah. I'm not going to, uh, no spoil alerts, but the beginning of the movie starts out with a disease that wipes out 80, I think it was, 80% of the people. A simian disease, monkey disease. So it's like you can't get away from it, right? I go to, to, to watch a movie and, you know, for entertainment to, to take my mind off of, of things and what's in my face, but more reality. Well, what I, think it's a, yeah. I think it's a sign, Red. Like I said, all those movies I brought it to their, everyone's attention before, but all those war, uh, war ending movies, world ending movies, they uh, they come out for a reason, <laughs> and they make you think. Uh, I think I, th uh, I, have a, I I think it's just because of all the shit that we have been seeing in the news that that is what makes those movies popular because. It does touch home, just like horror movies. They usually touch on what your what the fear is generally right. at the time that the movie is made. And right now, with the bird flu and the swine flu and all this other shit in the news, yeah, a lot of these shows come out because that's what we are hearing in the news. I don't think it's because they're trying to condition us. I just think it's because that's what's in the news, and we're scared of that shit. And so they're they're making something scary from what we're already scared of. Yep. And see, I got a different take on it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily to scare us. I mean, obviously it does. They want us in fear because that, that helps their agenda. But you got to remember too that uh, a lot of the stuff that we see in entertainment and here in entertainment is a playbook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, people know what's you know. It's weird. I don't know why governments like to do it, but they love telegraphing their intents. Yes, you know? especially the bad intent. Yeah, I don't know why, but they do. Well, why do all evil villains want to have a monologue of why they did it before they you know try to kill the good guy? But I know, isn't that crazy? And I just thought that was a movie thing, you know, until you started dealing with the government fucking you know doing these false flag drills just before an event, you know, and right around it so they're prepared and ready to deal with it very quickly. You know? And, you know, you thought it was just Dr. Evil or, you know, whatever one of the Bond villains were. Yeah. You know? it, it, it's funny because, you know, Mr. T <laughs> Mr. Tommy Boy 9 obviously is one of us. You know, he's basically saying he knew it was a joke because there's no cases in America yet. So, oh, yeah. But everybody is so PC and how dare you? I mean, it's just like uh, yeah, but I, you know, I knew, that, I knew it was in bad taste, but I also knew that there would be some funny you know, some funny thinkers like ourselves that would, would get it and be like aha, you know, clever uh, because it is about, you know, it, it is what we want to talk about first and foremost. I think it's the most pressing thing in the news, I mean, we could talk about a lot of a lot of stuff, but to me, it's on my mind, and uh, I wanted to get everybody's consensus on if if they're worried or concerned, or uh, do they think that this is going to be more than than what it is? Because you know, for a fact that we're not being told everything, and in fact, I would I would I would say that if they knew that it was an airborne situation, they wouldn't tell us. Yeah, no, you just start seeing first responders showing up in fucking masks everywhere. Right. You know? Would right. they tell and us? I, no. and Anybody I, I interested post, in my gas mask I have for sale? Your gas mask would work because you have a baby face. Uh, you know, like I said before, man, if you see me clean shaved, then it's grab your gas mask because shit's going down. And I tried to get him to do it for the video. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he wouldn't do it. But you know, it's funny. I mean, 
you know, look at that Georgia Guidestones. You and you and you and uh, Chad were talking about it the other day, right? Look at what the Georgia Guidestones tells people. That's what's you know something like that's going to happen, right? Either pandemic or apocalyptic, whatever you want to call. And what's the easiest way for a mass distinction is through disease, right? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. It's called duping the light, by the way. What was that, Chad? It's called duping the light, by the way. That's what why uh, psychopaths like to reveal their plan before carrying them out. Mm. Wow, see, I just never was that crazy. <laughs> right. Thank you to our serial killer in the room. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to say it, get the terminology correct. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh no, cognitive psychology is fascinating. That's what I studied, so yeah, it's called duping delight. And that's why they sit and smile. If you go back and look at all those cases where the uh, parents were to uh, say, oh, horrible thing, my child's missing, they've been abducted, blah, 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 and turns out we find out later that they, she drowned them in the tub and all that shit. You go back and look at those interviews with her and see the smiles on her face. Go back and look at the reason why all the Sandy Hook characters smiled. The day, just 24 hours after you lost your child on TV, smiling. It's called duping delight. That they're, it makes them happy to think they're smarter than you because you're buying it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And of course, psychologists like putting names on everything, so it makes even more sense. Yeah, and you know, you know, the government is all psychotics. They're all, you know, egomaniac. <laughs> psychotic serial killers because they, they all um, approve the funding you know for Israel and for the uh, the, the uh, DOD and and all that stuff so the blood's on their hands and they like it you know there's no war that a politician doesn't like because he's not fighting it his kid's not in it and it, it's just, you know, we can, we can create genocide around the world, but then when a few of us say, hey, secure the border, this is, this is a sovereign fucking uh, situation. We, we have no sovereignty if we can't control who comes and goes um, and, and, you know, know who's here, right? But we're bad people because heaven forbid there's some you know, 14, 15, 16 year old uh, tattooed males who may be fleeing a, a, a bad situation. Well, I got news for you. America is a bad situation. There's no jobs. There's no uh, health care for the veterans. There's no housing for the homeless. There's no, you can't feed the homeless hungry people anymore without a fucking permit. That's fucking so so don't tell me about, you know, this fucking bullshit. You know, that fucking whole open border thing, right? It's all about the kids, the kids coming up from the open border. But it's funny that more and more they're finding that it's not Central, Central Americans that are coming into the country, right? So you're finding people from Bangladesh, from, from Pakistan, from all over the fucking world. So what's to stop somebody from coming over from Liberia, right? Jumping on that same train, sick as a fucking as a ca a carrier, a typhoid Mary type, right? And passing that shit around all the way up through fucking Mexico, through the Americas, up to Mexico and into the United States. And every person they come in contact with physically or or in an enclosed space, they then become a carrier. Exactly. What's to stop that from fucking happening when our borders are wide open? Not a damn thing. But even moreover, apparently there's real terrorists out there who want to create havoc and terrorism on, on the United States for, you know, our war crimes. Uh, completely understandable, but, you know, they got a free pass. All they got to do is come through the northern or southern border, and it's game on, baby. Well, now that it's you know now that it's making its way out of Africa, it's only you know 
it's only a matter of time. Hence the gallows humor, right? On, hey, you know, and all of you who are into Dragon, if you watched the other two videos, you knew I wasn't sick with Ebola. I was sick with getting ripped off by a fucking car dealership. So, there it was. You know? So, to not get the joke, I have a hard time. I don't understand why, how you didn't get it as a joke. And it's the first time Reb stood up and is bartending the dragon. And the last, too. So, fuck y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I only do fill-ins because, uh, you know, that's just the way I roll. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, and let's talk about that for a minute. You know, how many of us can take a $2,000 hit? How many of us can go and, and put our hard-earned money out, you know, a family of, uh, of five, you know, one income, and take a $2,000 hit? No, I can't. I took a hit for $2,300. I took a hit for a fucking bulldog. I, I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. Most middle-class Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, yeah. and if, if, if they lose their job, Chances are they're not going to be able to get another one, and they're going to be homeless. But we got to worry about what somebody's saying about about Israel, or we got to worry about what somebody's saying about, um, you know, the uh, the uh, border patrol, or or you know, kids, or this or that or the other. It's like pick your fucking your bleeding heart topic and do something about it. Okay, because the rest of us, there's so many things going on. It just is beyond me. This is not agree, the Green yeah. Dragon has never been PC. The Green Dragon will never be PC. We're gonna tell it how it is. We're gonna tell it straight. Now you can disagree with us, but we are entitled to our own opinions. We are entitled to have a sense of humor in any way, shape, or form we see fit. This is true. Rev, check your message. I just sent you a message. What's up, Kansas? Someone has Tony Block. Someone's got Tony Block. He's still enjoying that jerky. Well, it's not me, damn it. I, I'm out of jerky. <laughs> You're out of the jerky already? Hey, man, it was good. I couldn't stop eating it. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in and then he gets, and then he goes out. Yeah, he he gets in, so nobody's got him blocked. Oh, yeah. No. I don't Rev, know what. Yeah, nobody Rev. got Tony blocked. Rev, check your uh, inbox. I just sent you a message. Do it in the internal, bro, because I'm I'm on the I'm only in here. All right, I'll send it in. I'm 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 the dragon tonight, so I don't have access to my other shit. Here it is. Just put it in the internal. I could see it, and I can veto it or whatever. But I did. I did send uh, Tony a link. Obviously, HTTP. So we're waiting. There you are. That shit won't. It, I can't get in on my computer. I, it, as soon as I come in, it kicks me out. Yeah. Nobody's got blocked, bro. So. How you guys doing? Doing good. You, Tony. I am fucking awesome. <clears throat> see this oh. here? Can you see that there, Mule? Yes, I can. And I've actually gotten to try some finally. <laughs> like so, a that, that one hit or quitter. Yeah, no doubt. How you doing, Rebel? <laughs> I'm doing all right, man. After getting attacked over a joke... You got attacked from a joke? Oh, well. Is this a joke? You Michael got, uh... Joke. Dude, it's getting serious down here in Vegas. There was, a. Uh, we figured it out last night. We are trying to figure out what this helicopter was that was flying over the freeway yesterday really low with, like, some instruments sticking out each side of it. <clears throat> and it, it looks like we found out it's a UN helicopter flying over the freeway here in Vegas, and uh, it was there. I think it was there today too. Oh, They're boy. testing for biologicals, chemical and biological. Yeah, I put they a great. They I put a great article over there in the Liberty and uh, Firearm Social Club. 
so you guys can know what these devices look like. Because when you start seeing those, it's time to, to start masking up. Let me see. Where is it? I can't even, even if you put a link, I wouldn't be able to see it. But uh, let me see if I can find it. Because I, well, if Tom, I. Tony, you called it earlier today. Raccoon City, baby. Here's you. They oh, can yeah. shut down Vegas quickly. There's four exits. There's four ways in and out of there. And they can shut them down very quick. And yeah. there's enough military there to close it off. You're basically talking Raccoon City is 100% good analogy. Dude, I, I, I couldn't even go to send some of these Ebola people to Washington. They're supposed to have some kind of a meeting about getting CDC to help them or something. Well, it's funny. Uh, Sonora Desert Prepper points it out in the chat, right? The guy from Texas, the doctor from Texas who worked for Doctors Without Borders, who died from the Ebola, right, over in Africa, well, he had his family with him, right? And they came home to Texas just before the dude, I mean, they weren't letting him out of the country. Well, just before he got terminal, they came back to Texas. Well, oh, check they're in quarantine right now in Texas. Check this out. Last night, I couldn't even go to sleep. I had to do that chat last night. It was just basic, basically a long video. But um, it's been fucking crazy here. And then I seen that helicopter. I'm on this, uh, on your Liberty thing, uh, Reb, looking for not sure what I'm looking for but if I I think it's in uh I think it might be in uh, red alert red alert okay so anyways you know the doctors that mules talking about right now they are shipping one of those doctors over here in a special whatever a special container special whatever and they are going to be housed here in the US so they're basically when have they ever done that? When have they fucking said, well, let's go grab somebody who's affected with Ebola, bring them over here and research them? I don't think they've ever done that. They might have bring the disease over here and researched it, but to bring a fucking human being who's carrying the shit over here to, I mean, the person is good as dead, so what's the point of bringing the person into the country? I mean, they said it today flat out on the news that they're going to transport that doctor, the one that's living. This is like Planner of the Apes. I'm telling you what, it's gonna. It's it, like playing the apes, bro. Yep. It's gonna yeah, be worse. I'm saying, and that's why, you know, I said what I said. Uh, you know. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't know me. I'm a nobody. But let me just give a, a, you know, a public service announcement. Don't believe anything you hear, and only believe half of what you see, and you may get out alive. You may get out alive. <laughs> I I just uh, do. You, I'm under red alert. What should I be looking for, uh, Reb? Oh shit! I, I don't know. If, I'd have to. Yeah, because if I see the instruments that I seen, I'd be able to. I'd know exactly. I mean, well, I, I don't. See... I don't exactly know what they look like on a helicopter, but I'll tell you one thing: they they look like uh, chimney pipes coming out of the uh, the vehicles. And the devices, um, the handheld devices, or I guess tabletop devices, uh, they're black, and they have. Um, well, I'll see if I can track it down, and I'll put it. I'll put a link. To it. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I could. This is what was sticking out of the helicopter yesterday. I tried to film it, but filming a fucking helicopter in the air with a goddamn iPhone just doesn't work very good. Right. So. Let me flip this around. So out of each side of the helicopter, let's just say this is one door and this is another door. And out of sticking out of one side was something like like this with a little round dome on it. And it wasn't like a, a camera because those would have been black. This was all white. It was like a little thing sticking out the side. It was pretty big, sticking out once uh, out of the left side and the right side. And it had a little white dome on the bottom of it. Hmm. Uh, imagine this is the helicopter, and yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know what that is, but yeah, it, it's highly possible that that's exactly what they were doing. And you know? and we we tried to find the helicopter, you know what I mean? Like anything that resembled the helicopter, and the only thing that we could find uh, was a UN helicopter, and that was um, uh, what's his name? I think is. He's got some funny name on YouTube. Your own dumbass is the name of his channel, or the name of his 
his YouTube thing, and he's the one that pointed it out to me, and then he joined me in the after chat, and we found the helicopter that I saw flying above the city, and it was it was blue on the bottom, and it was white. The rest, the whole helicopter was white, except for the bottom was all blue, and then a little bit, maybe a couple inches up each side was blue. But it wasn't the it wasn't the UN like light blue. It was like a darker blue. Maybe a contractor. Hey, Jason Brumsfeld. Yes, I am an asshole. And was it a bad attempt at humor me goading Reb into doing that that intro video? Okay, but it was still humor, right? And yeah, I know the incubation period is three weeks, but I live in Central Illinois. I don't live in West Africa, right? So it was just meant as a joke. And am I an asshole? Of course I'm a fucking asshole. I mean, I thought everybody knew that. Hell, Chad even tried to take my place there on Tuesday. You may well, be an asshole. You may be an asshole, Mule, but oh, you're, yeah. my, you're my asshole. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, thanks, you're all asshole. <laughs> and, and you wouldn't shit your favorite turd, would you? No. <laughs> I don't know why everyone says so that. Like, like Rep says, I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. I don't... I think fucking being real is fucking being an asshole, I guess. So I guess I'm an asshole. Well, yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, when you're so real, it's hard for people to take. I mean, people yeah. cannot wrap their head around what is going on. What do you want us to be, people? Fake and fucking direct and fucking... Basically, they want to go on their little lives thinking nothing's wrong. Like it's just a prissy little world out here. We're only and, fucking human, dude. And watch, fucking and watch their, 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 their stars. And, and Can't take a joke. We apologize again, but... <laughs> what? Yeah, was it distasteful? Oh, I, I thought we moved on from this. Really. Oh, no, them they can't take a joke. They can't take a joke. That's their own problem. Yeah. Let's move on. I thought we moved on from it. Well, no, and it's, you know, I respect Jason, so... You know, that's the reason why I answered it, right? Because <laughs> I respect Brumsfeld. I respect everybody who got a little ass hurt over it. I just don't understand how you can't see the humor, right? right. right. That's the part yeah. that boggles my mind is if, you know, if you've ever been in that life and death kind of situation, then humor is the last place you have to roll, right? You have to find it funny. Laugh or cry, right? The old tattoo, right? The old biker tattoo. It's either a laughing face or a crying face, right? So the Ebola thing, it's too big. It's like nuclear holocaust, you know? Like those of us that, that, that grew up during the Cold War, you know, you <coughs> laughed about the fucking fact that Russia could nuke you at any given time, especially if you grew up in New York City, right? Or you fucking worried about it and went crazy about it and ended up locked up in Creedmoor, right? Which is the main mental institution for fucking New York. Once you get off the, fl the happy floor of Bellevue, you end up in Creedmoor. Right? So, you have to laugh about it. You know? Yeah. And we, we all know that old rhyme, that old nursery rhyme, right? Uh, what is it? How does it go again? Damn it, I was singing it earlier. Uh, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes. We all fall down. Right? You know what that's about, right? That's about the Black Death. Yeah. The ring around the rosy was the, was the color that you would turn. You would turn red, you'd be bleeding internally, and it would form these sores on your body. Right? The whole fucking nursery run that we learned as a kid is all about the Black Death. You know, the Black Plague, the plague that, that ran across Europe. Those were dead. And and Jason's a, Jason's a cool guy, but everybody yeah. else who has got so much beef with the Green Dragon, fuck you, fuck you. I'm in the but Green Dragon. They'll keep coming back. That motherfuckers just always come back. So, it's like it's like it's like heroin. And what this next it? Wednesday, it might even have Wild Bill. I think I got him this time. I got his phone well, we number. Don't know I don't know about this next Wednesday for sure, but I'll try to get him on at least the next Wednesday after that. Well, I'll make sure I won't come on because I'm a cussing fucking fool, and I don't want to insult the man. All right. All right, yeah. listen. It, it's my fucking chat, so shut the fuck up. All right. Yes, sir. Hey, when did you shut up? I got a, 
I got a uh, an unboxing to do right here. Motherfucker. Hell oh, yeah, baby. So, my good friend, mute yourself, everybody. You're not fucking talking. And you have two friends in that household, so shout them both. Yeah, my good friends, uh, Riddle Girl and Poison Stinger, sent me a care package. Check this shit out. I am now bottling my own ale. <laughs> That's definitely all you, brother, all you. Oh, yeah, he is got that, He dude, got is that, that the, the arrogant fuck. Yeah, isn't that the shit? And if that wasn't good enough, he sent me some other goodies, too, but I got me another round of Burning Butthole Jerky 2.0. Isn't that the shit? Look at that. Back in the day, that'd be something else in those baggies, but nope. <laughs> yeah, they're labeled. It's like flavors of weed, man. Yeah, it's funny, too, because the honey, I expect it to be sweet. It's hot. The brown sugar, I expect it to be sweet. It's not. It's hot. And then the uh, spicy maple, I was like, wow, i got to steal that. I never even thought about using maple. In a uh, marinade, it's hot. Well, so, you know, it's funny that uh, Kansas got some, and he's, it's already gone, right, Kansas? He got the the medium version of it. I didn't want to cause anything bad to happen. But uh, <laughs> uh, tell <laughs> little girl. Tell well, little girl that, that uh, I sure enjoyed it. Tell little girl that the uh, the honey was fantastic. Try the maple when you have a clean palate. It's my favorite anyway. The maple? All right, I'll, yeah, I'll it, if you have a clean palate. That's the because once you have one piece, your you, your flavor taste buds are gone. I'm, I'm 45 <laughs> years old. How how could I possibly have a clean palate at this point? All right. Well, as clean as you can make it. <laughs> Drink the beer. All right, everybody can unmute themselves. I'm done with my shout out. Thank you, Poison Stinger and Riddle Girl. Thanks, Rab. Rab, well, I didn't oh. know you were 45, bro. <coughs> Shut up, I didn't say that. I'm about, yeah. to, I'm about to be 32, bro. He's 49. <laughs> Riddle Girl says next time we're putting the pins. <laughs> Rab, already started, Rab already started talking backwards, right? Because he's 46. Wait a minute, is this is this counting towards is this gonna be in place of a video, you bastard? No. Okay. I just you know I got I got young whippersnappers getting ahead of the game here. I can't Oh look. yeah, I mean instant. As soon as they got it, they they did a video. Holy hell. Yeah. So uh Sorry, that's what I do. Cheers to all the uh Green Dragon patrons and uh Riddle Girl with Poison Stinger. Thank you, guys, man. Yep. Have you ever had one of those before there, Reb? No, but I'll tell you what, it's delicious. It's a strong beer. It's a 7.2% uh, alcohol. And just the name's fitting. You know he's never getting rid of that bottle. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, that little icon there probably will end up painted somewhere. <laughs> Uh, Tracy will get you. Tracy will say that that will make a perfect back tattoo for you. You just yeah, don't right. the ale, right? Arrogant bastard is good enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, oh yeah, well, I needed to work on a link for Tony. <coughs> you guys go ahead and. Uh, well, do you have thing. you done shout outs yet? Ah, uh, no, I haven't done no shout outs. So, don't you think you should? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're running it, bro. I right know. He's kind of preoccupied now. I yeah. know. Um, I got out there. Uh, Julie's out there. <laughs> you guys keep it up, and I'm gonna take my ball and leave. <laughs> Julie. Uh, Crochet Forge is out there. Bro Lance is out there. Jason Brumsfeld's out there. Uh, Atomic Bulls is out there, Tony's out there, Sonora's out there, JQHL's out there, Barry Wood, Mike Newswinder, 
Uh, third Ops out there. You got a link somewhere, Third Op. And that's all I'm seeing for right now, but I'm not even as a dragon, so let me try and switch it up a little bit. If I drop off, it's because I'm stealing, well, I'm with their permission using somebody else's Wi Fi. The brown sugar, I think, is my favorite. Can't admit felonies on, on air, Mule. I know that, and I don't. I'm not committing a felony again. I went and spoke to my neighbor. Me and my oh, neighbor. That's, that's, that's not. That's not a felony yet. Never mind. I thought it was a felony well, already. No. By now, with permission is not a felony. If no, I was no, stealing, I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. Like, I'm just, who knows what's going to be a felony next? Is all I'm saying. Right. <laughs> Save American liberties <laughs> out there. Oh, and hey, uh, Joel says put that icon for the arrogant bastard on one of the 75 round drums. That would look good. Yeah. Yeah, that would. <clears throat> right? Man, good thing you sent oh, me. Hey, what's up, Tommy boy? Tom See, I didn't know I needed a refresh. What's up, Tommy boy? What's up, 69 bull Bones? How you doing? Caregiver, they're out. Can't wait to hear about Gallows Humor. I thought we already told you about Gallows Humor. Uh, Joel Sweatman's out there. Optimus Android. <laughs> Mindfuck Matrix is out there. J Watts out there. Right? And and that's you know what? If you don't understand Gallows humor, then I don't know how you deal with high stress situations. What's up, Smurf Killer? Ten round Patriots out there too, Smurf Killer just came in. How y'all doing? But I'm going to tell you from my point of view, and this is only my point of view. You can have your own. Welcome to it. But uh, high stress situations where there's a danger of getting injured or hurt, right, or killed, have always been one, at least around me and the people I've been through those situations with, one where we're constantly cracking jokes, laughing nervously at them. Right, because if you leave that stress, you either do what's you either you know attack what you're being stressed at and build up more energy from it, or you have to let it off like a pressure release valve. And humor is that pressure release valve. And gallows humor is especially a pressure release valve. You will see it in high high stakes situations. Right? I don't know, Jason. You've been in the military. Right? Did anybody send? I don't know. You know, I've talked to Rep. But those of you who've been in the military, who've been in combat situations, are you going to tell me I'm wrong? And if you are, please come in and tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that you're all serious faced, and you, you know nobody's joking around, nobody's cracking a fart, you know nobody's trying to make everybody loosen up a little bit, you know. Because if I'm wrong, let me know. But I know that's how I react in those kind of situations. You know, high stress, high whatever. You know, what do you Sometimes think? Sometimes you got to laugh or you're going to shoot somebody. Sometimes. Well, let me, uh, okay, I can give you examples in my own, li in my own life. And this is not going to be a one violence against anybody, but a way of reacting to a high stress situation that people don't understand, right? Whenever I get hurt, I usually laugh, right? One time, I'm trying to kickstart my bike, and I got ratcheted over my handlebars. Now, anybody who's ever tried to fucking kickstart a panhead will know what I'm talking about, right? And I fucked my knee up good, but I'm laughing the whole time. Why? Because that's how I deal with stressful situations. I laugh. Instead of crying, instead of screaming, instead of yelling, I laugh, right? I do the screaming, the yelling, and the crying for before the high-stress situation. During them, it's humor and stoicism. You know? So, welcome, Bro Lance. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Good evening, sir. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having a green dragon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Rev, you were saying good thing there was a what in there? A beer. Because, <laughs> dude, I tell you, instant runny nose, instant forehead sweat. That's yeah. a good beer. No, I'm talking about the jerky. I think, oh. thankfully, the beer is, is what's keeping me 
able uh, to speak. <laughs> you mean not like not like poor Chris, that poor bastard. He could. The, and again, the wife had to take over, right? The wife was the one that was like, "Oh, this is really good. It's not too hot." And I was like, looking at Chris. Poor Chris is looking like Stinger the first time. I was like, ah. "Did you guys? Did you when at the beginning of that video too? When he first takes the bite, he's like, "Oh, that's not hot at all." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, wait for it, wait for it, because it's." It's one of those things that it takes about 10 seconds to kick in, and sure enough, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's hot. Yeah. And then it gets me to laugh every time. Again. How you doing, bro, Lance? Doing really good. Not not too far from you, so you know what the weather's like. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's rather nice, isn't it? Has been. When are you going to get your butt up here to get your your, your stuff? <laughs> right. That's the one from the rebel, the the rebel. Uh, uh, when he's rebel yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of making appointments. If I make an appointment, I'm gonna fail on it. So okay, I'll just get there when I get there. Give me a call right before you get here, so I can put the dog up. That's all I. Ask. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> and when are you going shooting again, uh, cans? Um, I'm hoping maybe this weekend or maybe uh, the uh. Middle, the middle of next week. That's cool. So. Can't wait to see it. Always like to see your shooting videos, especially because you never stop smiling the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was cool to see you go out after I was gone and take it to the range. I can't wait to see the next one every time. Me too, me too. And Sting, you saw that giant smile on his face. Couldn't get it off of there the whole time in the second video either. It's all just big, mm -hmm. giant grin. I'll be Blair, a I'll wait till you come on the chat and tell us you got sore face. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, he was pretty. Uh, had some pretty sore cheeks after all that was the first time, anyway. You know. Oh, I did. I did. It was. It was so much fun. And then I, we had a good couple days. Blowing that, blowing that thing up. That that cake up was to, to, to die. I mean, it was. That was just awesome. It was. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to get to go to get another couple of things or stuff to go out and shoot out there. Tannerite. Tannerite's a blast. Well, yeah, literally. Yeah, really. <laughs> so much more fun than just shooting paper, you know? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about. It. Doing it again, see what I damage I could do. All right. Well, can about I bring you guys a topic real quick? Oh, yeah. yeah. A, a thought I had about when this uh, video went up of the preview for it and how people got offended about, you know, uh, something that wasn't true but it was meant to be a joke, and then it didn't turn out to be a joke. Well, with all that's going on in the world right now and the propaganda that's being placed. If we can't figure out this small thing amongst us, what's a joke, what's true, what's not, how are we going to determine what's true that we're being told in the news or outside of us, our friends, our family? I mean, that propaganda is pushing really, really hard. This yeah, was a simple one. To me, this was a simple one. I know you guys enough. I knew this wasn't true. I've seen the past video. You know why? Go ahead. You know why? Because you have a sense of humor. Yeah, you know what's funny though is these people these people take everything that they they are so proud of themselves for questioning everything, but they don't because they believe anything when it's their way of thinking. You know, if it's anti Obama or if it's conspiracy theory, they they just I got go some with it flammable snow for you. They go with it full board, <laughs> just like the flammable snow, right? And if you're going to question everything, question everything, including the things that people that are your friends tell you. Don't be gullible. Shit. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that was, I thought, I'll tell you what, it was the best laugh I had in three weeks, right? Because I've had a shitty fucking three weeks. And when Rev did that and I saw it after me and him bullshitting, and we were on the phone. We weren't even on a fucking chat. He called me. And, you know, it's fucking <coughs> fucked up, right? 
And then I saw Chris's video in his his box opening, and so I've just been laughing pretty much since, you know. Well, Dooley did something very similar, you know, a video where he was acting oh, like he was good. sick and he was freezing every few minutes. A lot of people got pissed off in that video, too. And I didn't understand that because it was people that know him, people that watch his channel. And how are you going to get offended like that? Can't I mean, if I was sitting next to you, I, if you came over to my house and did that shit, I would know. Dooley, don't, don't remind me that. Dooley had me literally crying, Okay. I watched that fucking video of duels, and that motherfucker had me crying, literal tears, almost puke, right? Be with him talk. Yeah, it like, was hilarious. Oh my god! And then resetting, like his meds kicked him back on a fucking turntable or something. Oh, that's just hilarious. I don't know, but people were getting pissed off about it. You know, how dare you do that to me? Well, it's one thing to care about somebody. If you really care about them, you'll know when they're really sick and when they're not. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're not sensitive enough anymore. Maybe they're just too caught up in all the bullshit. And how about yeah, verifying it's, first? It's so bad. All they can see is the first thing they see. And someone says they're sick. Oh, my God, it's terrible. How they, And then if they find out that you're just teasing, oh, hell, that was just terrible to do to me. Politically it's political offended. correctness. Well, it was just dope, and that's all it was. And like you've all said, you know, Roland, like you just said, you know, if you didn't understand that, first of all, you think you know us, right? So that tells you you don't. Because if you didn't understand, I would find that fucking hilarious. Then you really don't know me. You know? Right. And that's the point. That's the point right there. You think you know, but you have no idea. And that's why it's a good idea to verify before you even respond. I mean, if you notice, that was my response was to ask, I think I asked Reb, uh, hey, what's the deal with Neil? You know? I think all you put down was what the fuck. Cause you oh, the, yeah, on the comment. But then I sent uh, Reb a message just saying, hey, what's up with Neil? Because I wanted to... Hi, you guys, man. It's not that serious, brothers. It's really not. We should be talking about important shit, and that shit. Yeah, work. like the fucking... The, the, Dude, we're all in on... Oh, we're all, man, when Tony, when Tony steers this ship away from <laughs> bullshit, we know we're off the rails. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we just keep, we've been about going about on brothers. this... We've been going on this for like 52 minutes now, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's done. It's all, like, like, no, it's no all the dis people... No disrespect to nobody, but we taken. all know each other who know each other, and that's all yeah, that matters. Exactly. Well, the serious part of it, though, that I feel the serious part of it is that if somebody just makes a joke and a lot of people with loaded guns snap, we got a problem. And that's the serious part of it. So you know, if you don't know each other, if you're in a group of people and you don't know each other, you need to get that shit straight. It's like telling a horror story in a campfire with a whole bunch of pistol and rifle freaks out there and then coming up through the woods dressed as a zombie. <laughs> Somebody's going to get shot. <laughs> it's like Bill Murray in fucking zombie land, right? Yeah. I saw... So we got the militia actually on the border. There's video. There's photos. There's them doing interviews. Arizona militia is handling their business again like some champs. What do you guys think is going to happen? Hard to tell. I know they're they're being cut off the YouTube. Yeah, and Blaine Cooper needs help. I never heard of Blaine Cooper until today. And I know they shut him down on the Facebook too. Damn. Well, well, he was part of the Tony. He was part of some of the early or original uh, set protection, little protection group in the militia. Yeah, he was, and he was also the person who stood up and told John McCain he should be tried for treason and deported, and that video went viral on YouTube. That's where I first heard of him. Yeah, and you know, you know what's cool though about the whole militia thing is the dude that's running shit down there on the air, like. For the Arizona, he's running that squad or whatever. That's the same dude in the same group that was out at Bundy Ranch. I remember talking to that dude, the dude that was doing the interview on the farm. I talked to him at Bundy Ranch. So, you know what I mean? He spent a lot of fucking time at Bundy Ranch. I'll tell you that much right now. And Blaine Cooper's legit. 
Fill Blank us in people. on uh, fill us on on the latest news from Blaine, please. That they've yanked his Facebook page for that last video showing the um, the cartels cut slot, you know, crawling across the grass at night. They're they're using infrared and just watching them as bright as day. Uh, Border Patrol driving past them 20 times, looking like a fool. They're just laying right there in the grass, just all night long. It's wild. But anyway, they pulled his channel. Facebook's good about that. You start telling the truth, you won't last long. Yep, and is he still on Twitter? Is he on Twitter? I don't even know that Blaine's on Twitter. I've never talked to him there. They didn't. they won't shut down Twitter for the most part. Twitter's like a good one to to. That's the good thing. I fucking hate Twitter, but that was like the lifeline to Bundy Ranch out there, out in the middle of nowhere. It was yep. so crazy. So you gotta check and see if he's got a Twitter, and then you know what I mean. I guess I, I need know. to end up on Twitter then. What do you guys think? I know, but what do you guys think is going to happen now, okay? Because I'm telling you the same group. We're talking about, all right, somebody who's already basically a vetted group. Not only are they out there weekend warrior, but they were at the actual – they spent time. I know the dude, like I said, talked to him. He spent fucking time at the Bundy Ranch. I mean, he was out there for, I want to say, a month probably. I mean, maybe longer. Who the fuck knows? I don't even know how long. It was like every time I went out there, I basically seen him until probably like the last couple times. So this vetted group is down there on the border, vetted off the Bundy Ranch. You know what I mean? What do you guys think? Because they were at the Bundy, Bundy Ranch, they were vetted? I feel like, yeah, because that's what they did. What I was just thinking about following the money. I mean, where where do you got that kind of money to be there that amount of time and be down in Texas now too? Well, cause Who's he they, with? They came up from Arizona. They came up from Arizona to Bundy Ranch. That's not really that far. And now I believe that they, yeah, I think that they're, yeah, they're in El Paso. So yeah, they're they're on the. Uh, they're but they're, right on, there. they're on private land, right? Yep. They're down there working for a rancher, basically getting three hots in a cot, right? So they, you know, where are they getting the no cash? I agree, probably. I don't know where they get their money from. Well, but, the Arizona militia, dude. I'm pretty sure that they they take care of all that. Not not the whole Arizona militia is not down at the at the Texas right. border. It's just different. I think the groups. whole Arizona militia is supporting those five ten guys that are down there. Well, there's ten. To, so far, there's ten teams, is what they say. Ten different teams. Not all of them are, not all of them are from Arizona. I think like one or two of the groups are from Arizona, and the rest are from all over the place, from what I, I've uh, been reading. And that's coming out of uh, their home groups are helping to support them. You know, and these are people that are either on vacation or they're able to take that kind of time. But yeah. why don't we know? I mean, if we say vetted. That's not vetted. It's yeah, just like I, this whole no, no, it, it thing. Is. And, Bro, Lance, I'll you know, tell people you won't exactly. even read down three comments to see that this particular thing was a joke. So what's vetted? Yeah, exactly. So that's a good question. You know, yeah, vet, I would say vetted because, dude, they went. Okay, what they did was I don't want to say too much on online what they did, but well, they did a lot. They, dude, they did a lot of shit like at night and shit like setting up. Dude, they basically set up how it was going to go down, and it went down, and it went down smooth. I mean, everybody didn't see what you seen if you were there. Like, the videos don't serve it justice to where to what the Arizona militia and a couple other militias did. That, that whole week leading up to that, or that whole couple days leading up to that, dude, they were putting in work at night. So them seeing and being able to see all these guys and stuff coming across the border, okay, well, they, they scouted they scouted and assessed the Bunny Ranch thing. Now they're scouting and uh, assessing the cartel thing. Yeah, they can't really do nothing right now, but... but they, were show, well, they were doing something, right? They were showing video of them coming across. <laughs> no, I know. And, yeah, that's exactly the point. Yeah, they can do that. And, like I said, they did it against the government, so it's got to be a little bit easier to do it. Maybe maybe it's not against these cartels and all that shit. So they assess that shit, and then this dude, I forget what his name is, he's calling up, I think, 
some ridiculous amount of Minutemen, like Minutemen across the country to fucking back this up with the videos and, and the information that's coming out of the border. I think it's like 3,500 or maybe it's more. I don't remember. Well, I'll like everything else, bro, we're going to have to see because, first of all, 3,500 Minutemen show up down at the border area. How are you going to feed all that many fucking people, right, in an inrush? They're already having <clears> problems with the people coming across the border, right? So there's all kinds of logistical problems, but... I mean, like we've seen with the Million Man marches and all that if shit. The, if the stuff. people, if the people in Texas and Arizona where they're at, though, I'm talking about the actual citizens of those states. If those citizens of that state are not taking care of the militias that are going down to the border, I'm talking about just like Bundy Ranch, dude. There was so much donations and so much shit. It was crazy how much shit people drove all the way the fuck out in the middle of nowhere to come drop off truckloads of shit, food, water, all that kind of shit. And that was in the middle of nowhere here in Vegas. If the fucking state of Arizona and Texas and shit like that can't step up, and fucking support the militias that are willing to go down there. That's to me. That's how it has to work. The people are gonna have to come in just like they did Bundy Ranch and supply the people who are spending weeks and weeks out there. Your problem is what the actual average citizen is. If they didn't drive by and see you out there, they don't know anything about it. They didn't hear about it on the news. They didn't hear about it on the radio. They didn't hear about it on their friends or even at the you water can't, tower. You can't, at work. you can't ignore this border thing. Everybody's pissed. Well, yeah, it's in the news, but it's not like the desperation of the people that are out there <laughs> making a fight. You know, you need porta potties, you need food, you need, you know, all the different types. Of, you need medical even. But they're not. Well, out we're there talking. Fighting. If you're talking about still, if you're still talking about that many people, it's that's not even that many people. If you think about it, the border is hell along. It would be small. It'd be small like oh, God yeah. It's also a different. It's also a different reason. Of why this is going on now when Bundy was happening right it was about this woman getting tased this cancer survivor getting tased that's what with the sparking uh, thing was that pissed everybody off here you got even our side you know the people that were on our side in Bundy Ranch not all of them are on our side in the border because some of them think that yeah they're just children man why what do you have against children so we have even less people, I believe, supporting this whole uh, border issue than we did for the Bundy Ranch. Yeah, the border, I mean, this this children is, is a bad thing. Well, it makes you wonder why Ebola, uh, Ebola is, I mean, it's been around for a little while now, but it hit the mainstream really hard. Is that out there to cover up the border a little bit, too, and maybe dampen the news down on that? Probably. I think that's the reason. I would imagine that the worry of Ebola would make the border situation even more prevalent because now we got to worry about an Ebola outbreak coming from our southern border, not just from Africa, not just from wherever that one was. I thought about that too, but it's, some, it's like some people can't focus on two things at once. I mean, they're coming across the border or they got Ebola. It's one of the two. And I know they're coming across the border with Ebola, but there's some reason this current population can't focus on that. I mean, like somebody was talking about earlier, the guy being flown in uh, to a hospital in Georgia that has Ebola. Why? why? It doesn't make sense to me, but people won't question that or deal with that because we've got this other thing going on. Yeah. Well, well I mean, it's a lot of... Uh, to me, I believe it's all meant to, to keep us busy so that they can get away with something else. And I believe it is. It's, it's letting, I mean, like, he's up there slamming Republicans, et cetera, et cetera. I believe he's doing a lot of backdoor deals, and we're not catching them because everybody's watching what's going on everywhere else. It's a magic show. It is. It's, it's smoke and mirrors. Dude, I, I I had this song that it's a country song too, and I somebody sent it to me a long time. Well, somebody, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. I'll think of it, but he's the one that it's an unknown artist. My whole point, and the song it has the lyrics with it. I just shared it again the other day. I posted it a long time ago, but I mean, I don't really like country, but that shit's a fucking awesome ass song. You listen to the song, and it's just all about. It's just about the political situation. If you listen to it, 
You'll understand, dude. There's no, the the only box left. <laughs> Tell him, you the only box the left. Cartridge box. <laughs> well, share the name of the song. You know we can't play it, or else we'll get a fucking copyright thing. No, you won't. It's an unknown artist. There's anybody could sh take it and download it and do whatever they want with it. Oh I yeah. I could unlock it and people could share it if they want. I mean. Cool. So yeah, just put it in the uh, in the dragon. All these share it out. Let people listen. All these events are just here to fuck with us, man. I mean, just like Kansas is saying. It was it Kansas, right? Even Kansas. I mean, it is. It just keeps you busy, keeps your head fucked up. I mean, it does. Everything. I mean, it's always everything we do. It's like you can't get away from. I've been trying to defrag myself, but I get off. I go to here, watch a show, and it's as 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 uh, Mule said. It's it's like, oh well, we're talking about Obola, eh? and read the paper. It's talking about someone dying and in in, in 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 fires and shit, and that the president's not giving no relief to this agency. Da, 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 da. And then then you hear about bullshit that they're they're they 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 get away with this and that, and it's just it's it's never ending, no matter where you go. Squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's why it's... sometimes you gotta laugh at the squirrel too, right? Because the squirrel's doing funny shit. Yep. That's right. And, you know, just the way you, you can't really, you go crazy if you don't detox every once in a while. Yeah, that's right. 100%. And, and then so you I'll kill the squirrel and eat it because they're tasty. <laughs> they are, I'm, by the way. I've been watching old movies. That's all I've been doing. What about, okay, so we're trying to keep on maybe a topic or something. I don't know where Rebel's at. Where's Rebel at? <laughs> um, I was just gonna say though. Okay, what would you personally, what would you personally do if really? no, somebody put something in that beer that oh, they said? Bastard! <laughs> <laughs> what would you What would you do if say something went down? Okay, let's say the cartels attacked the militias and they got into a firefight, and then it comes back. To the to the mainstream, we get we get word of it. What 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 is your mind thinking then? Like what what do you think you would do personally? How would you feel? How about that? How would you feel? That's better, less incriminating. How would you feel? I'd feel a little upset that no one's down there helping them. You know, it's like so many people. We have so many people that are militia that someone should be down there helping them. And I believe I still that's another thing that upsets me now. Is, there ain't enough people down there helping them. They're needing help. Yeah, but in the mentality with most people that somebody else will do it, I mean, that's what I've seen in the common uh, population. If you have a need, everybody thinks somebody else will take care of that. Somebody else will pick that up. I, I, I'm, I'm already in trouble. I'm doing my own thing. Somebody else will take care of that one. All right, so, okay, okay, okay. Then say the feds attack the militias down there. How do you feel? Oh, that would be a fucking problem. That's worse than the cartels attacking the militia? Yeah, yeah, because that's the people that I pay 33% of every dollar I make to to protect me, and I know it's a voluntary system, and I could quit doing it. The only reason I don't quit doing it is because I don't want the trouble that comes from quitting doing it. So I keep doing it, but there's going to come a time when I say, you're not for me, you're totally against me. I mean, I guess we have that now, but it's not to the extreme that most people will stand up. And for me, it's not to the extreme I'm willing to quit paying taxes. But those are the people, when you say the feds, yeah, they, they take that step and they don't support our own militia defending our own borders with our own laws that are there in place already and they're supposed to do it and they come against you, we got a problem. Yeah, I'm I'm with Bro Lance on that one 100%. And as far yeah, it's as it's different when it's a cartel member because they're obviously not ever 
have or ever have been on our side one one iota. So obviously they're you know against us. That and means they're to have the people that are supposed to back you be against us. That would suck. That means they're for the cartel. That means they're for everything, for the corruption. That means they're for them com coming across. That means Absolutely. they're helping them and not us. Which we're kind of seeing that now when they're flying them over the border in airplanes and dropping them off in cities. That's like going over our head. Oh, you can't get us up here. So they're kind of doing it now, but it's just, it's such a small thing. It's like being tapped with a cotton swab, but eventually we're going to get tapped with a needle and then probably a fucking gun bullet. Or an Ebola bullet. <laughs> oh. Oh, Where the hell did Reb go? We were talking too much. Hopefully to edit and upload videos. Well, he's the bartender tonight. What, Kansas, you stepped up for a minute and he decides to uh, let you take over? That ain't right. I, I didn't do anything. He just said he was stepping out for a minute to go do something, and he'd be right back. Last thing I heard from him, unless he wrote something over on the side. No, he didn't. And I just got to break his balls because he bailed on his own damn chat. <laughs> Somebody put something in that beer. Stinger? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, that powder that was on the jerky used to be pepper flakes. <laughs> I, wanted to share, I wanted to share something with you guys earlier, but I, I totally forgot. Um, so, you know, I did the La Raza video. If you haven't seen it, I think it's a classic. I haven't personally watched it, but it seems to be getting good reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, So, one of the comments, and this is like the mentality of the people who are on both sides as far as, like, the, the, the stupid criminal fucks. You know what I mean? So he wrote he wrote on that video, he's like, we are, he's like, we are back, Hoto. He's calling me fag or whatever in Spanish. We are back, Hoto. This is Mexico now. Get used to it. No border anymore. Border all of the, and you know, obviously you can't fucking talk for shit. No border anymore. Border all of the agents working with us. Don't hate. We won this already. Green, white, and red in your face now, that coconut. Now what, coconut? That's what he called me. Uh, viva La Raza, viva, La Me or, uh, viva Mexico, viva, viva, viva La Raza. We holding the votes in our hand, and if we, if we were weak and a few, there wouldn't be a problem. But we are many and strong, so again, quit hating, and he calls me another derogatory term in Spanish. In case some people don't know, when they're, you're called a coconut, that means you're white on the inside, brown on the outside, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, because in the comment before that, he told me I was uh, I was a race trader, this, that, and the other, something to that effect. Well, which, which okay, now, can somebody explain to me, when they say La Raza, what do they really mean? Are the they race, the brown no, but are they talking the native Mexican people, or are they talking the ones that have been mixed with Spanish blood, or are they talking about the pure Spanish that came over and conquered them? What they practice is the Aztec shit, so it had to be like before. So then, it's gonna it, even if they win, are they gonna end up doing like the Nazis did, where you don't have enough Aryan blood in you? I mean, because this, because once you start saying the race, it gets real. You can get real creepy there. Right, real quickly. <laughs> but no, I just wanted to show you the mentality of the people that are. I mean, all of our worst fears are fucking confirmed just by their mentality. They say it right there. We're coming over. We're gonna fucking get legalized. We're gonna fucking. We're gonna vote, and this shit is gonna be how we want it, basically. And that's what they're gonna do. They're not, he's not lying. He wasn't wrong, even though he was a dick. I said, yeah, I didn't say he was wrong. <laughs> you know? Well, no, he's he but he is wrong. He's actually ignorant, just like the rest of them. And they're being played just like pawns in chess. So walk across the desert, monkeys. 
But I mean, Chad, come on, they're all the way up by you. They're up by Canada. They're all over the. They're all over the country. I know. I know. And, and with this amnesty, well, then if they're all able to get ID and then hence to vote, it right? doesn't matter. Voting is masturbation without orgasm. Oh, we know that, right? <laughs> but they'll use that against us. God. I like you, Chad. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. It, it means nothing. It, they don't make these plans a hundred years in advance uh, and, and hope that maybe you just vote according to the way they want it to go. It, it's just not how shit works. I mean, we've either got to be beyond that and operate in a different way, or we're just going to continue to wonder why nothing makes sense, you know? Well, um, the thing is, is we're under inclusion and not even in no... I'm not trying to be like this fucking... This, I mean, Hey, right? or something like that. Just because you say we're under invasion, we're under invasion. They're gonna let them motherfuckers in. They're gonna fucking legalize them all. You know what I mean? And they're gonna totally. We think it's bad now. Just you guys wait. I'm telling you. So the people either have the chance to stand up and stem the tide, or however they say it, or or lay down and get rolled over. Uh, and I think we're going to lay down and get rolled over. Maybe not all of us, but by the time the people who are ready decide to do something, psh, there'll be few, far, in between. Well, it's already too late, really. Because they pushed the child issue and the baby issue, which I'm hearing today about anchor babies, mamas coming over that are pregnant, and the baby's born here, well, the baby is a U.S. citizen. Now the mom can somehow get U.S. citizenship. Because of the general population having this sensitivity, which I think is misplaced because they don't understand what it's going to do to our future, they're, they're sensitized about that, you know, children and mamas and pregnants and babies and all that. This shit's going to continue to happen, and I think it's too late, too, because... Uh, the people that stand up and fight against it, they're going to look like crazy. I mean, they're going to demonize the militia like they always do. They're going to demonize the people that are trying to stop these poor children and these poor pregnant women from getting away from the bad drug dealers and shooters and gang members and all the bullshit that they try to push through the mainstream. So, yeah, it'll continue. How about we support their uh, fucking people like we supposedly support the Ukrainians or, or whoever else that you know we want to support at the time, go and support them and take troops down there and wipe out the drug cartel. Oh, wait, that's right, because we're making money off the drug cartel. Lots of money. Yeah, and, you know, we don't have a blackjack Pershing anymore. You know, we're not going to go chase down the banditos, you know, the whole Pancho Villa thing, you know, like we should. I mean, back in the day, we did things like that, right? You're doing cross-border raids, blah, blah, blah. We went down, took care of it, came back over, and, you know, stayed on our side of the border. Well, let's claim, claim Mexico is ours. Go down there and just say, okay, you got to go buy our gun laws now, bitch. Well, we could, you know, that's the thing, though. You know, when, when Pershing's uh, expeditionary force entered into Mexico, they basically took it over. Right, and they weren't fighting against the Mexican army, right? They're fighting against the drug cartels of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And we invaded Mexico then, and Mexico just said, "Okay, you know." So you really think they'd stop us now if we went down there and cleaned house for the? But like whoever Sting just said. You know, they're making too much money with the drug cartel. We can take out an entire sovereign country, Iraq, Afghanistan, in a, in a matter of hours. Yeah, we can't secure our own border. Yeah, yeah, how's that? It's because they don't want to. It's plain and simple. Yep. Nobody wants to admit that. You know, nobody wants to admit that we don't want the borders closed. Yeah, you know, do you want to pay seventeen dollars an hour to have somebody pay, mow your lawn, or do you want to pay five dollars an hour to have somebody mow your lawn? Okay, right? what about those people who wash the dishes in restaurants? Do you want to pay them? <laughs> do you want to pay them a good wage and pay them like you know an American citizen, or do you want to pay them what you can when you don't have to have them on the books at all? Or you could even go with the voting uh, idea that. 
you know, th that the Democrats don't want to stop the borders from being closed because that's their voting base right there. But it's not just <laughs> them, though, Sting. I mean, right, look well, I'm just saying you can even business. use that one. Yeah, you can use that one, but look at a lot of small businesses. They love the <laughs> They don't want the fucking the Chamber of Commerce doesn't want the fucking border closed. The Better Business Bureau doesn't want the border closed. Why? Because they love that cheap ass labor. Yeah. You I know, think I've actually read it. If they if every American business just fired everybody they couldn't verify a, a social security number and match one up to a face and do a basic background check on, and you can't match them up. If they fired every employee that wasn't an American citizen or wasn't here with a green card, you Well, I know they're doing that here. I don't know about everywhere else, but here we have E-Verify, right? And you're required as a business owner to, to use it. And the ones that get caught, I mean, we have raids on a daily basis around here on businesses. And every fucking day you can turn on the news and see Sheriff Joe raiding on another establishment and uh, taking out a whole bunch of these illegal aliens. And a lot of people will be like, what, well, they weren't doing anything wrong, man. They were just trying to provide for their family. No, because they come in here and they get, um, I, they steal people's identity in order to have a social security card in order to, you know, get work or whatever. And therefore, they're fucking me up if they steal my identity, you know, and, and do some shady shit on that. So, yeah, it's it's more than just them trying to, you know, provide for their family here. There's there's identity theft. There's a lot of shit that they do that affects me and everybody else that lives here. Yeah, but you see, most most cities around this country are not doing what, what your sheriff's doing, right? Up here in Chicago, they're not fucking doing that shit. Yeah. You know, you'd have whole neighborhoods clearing out if they were, you know, but that's just not happening. Hey, did Reb join us again? Man, I'm welcome back to your own YouTube. fucking channel. Right. <laughs> the whole, my whole, my, I had to reboot my modem and the whole nine. So glad Did you could join your channel. Welcome oh. back, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Got your squirrel running again, huh? You got to feed that squirrel, that little hamster, you know, running around the wheel once in a while. Maybe give us some of that turkey. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Come in under the dragon, huh? All right, let's see here. Some of that jerky, right? That motherfucker be over over amping his computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is I warm out here. Wow. That has something to do with it. Let me refresh. Do a shout out. To the rep while he's figuring out his crap. Hey, uh. I'm going to send you a message there, G, in the internal. I lost all other information, obviously. Go ahead, Neil. Well, no, I just wanted to refresh everything. All right, so let's go here. Start up Lewis first. Wild Iron Horseman is there out there. What's up, Wild Iron? Green Dragon Chats is putting up the how the CDC... Now, that's the thing. You know, we were joking, right? But HDP put up some serious info yesterday about the CDC, and somebody just relinked it. That was me. Dragon that, internal chat, external chat. That was the link Tony was asking for. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, where the CDC warns of airborne Ebola. Yeah. So, what's up, Jason? Dooley? Uh, Juliana Moore's out there. Ten Round Patriot. Uh, Bro Lance. So this is a while ago, actually. It's like so third op. Yeah, it is a while ago. Sonora Desert Prepper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'll have to wait for all the uh, all the new stuff to catch up because the latest is from when it's. Yeah, I would like to say thanks. For sending, I didn't know there was anything in the mail. Thanks for warning me. Yeah, but you got the you got the G version of the of the stuff. Ah, uh, here we go. You didn't get the arrogant bastard version. Uh, 
Jay Watts out there. Uh, Croatia Forge disagrees with the cheap labor reasoning, and I'm willing to hear anybody's argument on that. I'm, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm I'm definitely. That's what I like about ideas. I can change them better, easier than beliefs. You know, Jay Watts out there. Uh, Joel's Quantum Heart Logic's out there. Optimus Android, Save America's Liberty. You know, I'm glad it updated. Yeah, and Optimus Android pointed out something good. If the Founding Fathers had worried about how rebelling was going to make them look, there'd have never been a United States. Yeah, ain't that the damn truth? Yep. American yeah. Hyde is out there. Uh, Gator Red 157, K Candy. Uh, dying time ones out there, caregivers out there. Sonora Desert Prepper is out there. He must be on base because he just heard taps about 22 minutes ago. Says here. So yeah, I think I'm all caught up now. Looking, QC Hemp. Yep, shout him. Oh, more showing up. God, this crap's slow. All right, so I'm all done. I'm all caught up, basically, and I'll catch up again for you in a little bit, Reb. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So what did I miss? <laughs> I, that was, not only did I get well, kicked off, but I, couldn't, I couldn't follow on my phone or nothing. The whole whole deal went down. Dude, you missed out the best part. We didn't even finish either. These guys were saying if the cartel killed some of our militia, they wouldn't do nothing, but if... No, you didn't give everybody a chance, dude, first of all. Yeah, yeah I know that's what I said. We're not, I said we weren't finished, yeah, but I'm just saying. A lot of you guys were in agreement that if the cartel killed some of our militia, you'd be okay with it. And if, well, not yeah. okay with it. Nobody's saying they're okay with it. What they're saying is that those men are down there taking their chances, and they understand what they're facing, right? So nobody's saying they're okay with it. Will you support the, we, can you support them financially? Can you support them materially? If you can do, if you can, you know, pull up stakes and quit your job and go down there, and that's what you feel you need to do, that's awesome. But they're down there voluntarily, right? So we have to support them voluntarily, right? And then you flip the script and you said, well, what if the Fed starts shooting on the militia down there? Well, then it becomes a whole different ball game because, like everybody said, right, the Fed, the, our government is supposed to protect us, not the not the cartels that are sending people across and using 50 cows for cover fire to let them get across, right? So, yeah, it's a different ball game. I mean, voluntarily, will you try and help? Of course you will. Will you, if you, if God puts on your heart or whatever puts on your heart for you to go down there and face the, face the elephant out there with your firearm, then that's what you're gonna do. If you have the money, you financially support them. Okay, so if the, if the, if the government killed some of our militia down there, however it went down, what, is that time? What was that? What is that? People jumping in their vehicles and heading down to the border? I mean, what are the some that are close enough, sure, but can you imagine trying to head from Minnesota to fucking El Paso, Texas? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what would happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what. That's the question on what's happening now. It, are the people of Texas stepping up now? Are they? You know, we don't get to. It's. I fucking information block coming out of there. That that's what I'm seeing. Is there's nothing coming out and nobody's talking about it. And I don't even know. It, it's weird. People who are down by the border aren't talking about it. You know, because there are people on YouTube that are down by El Paso. Some people are talking about it, but not enough to where. It's getting out to the general public. Sorry, go ahead, bro. Lance. I just want to throw this at Tony real quick because to understand the difference between what the cartel is and the federal government, is your next door neighbor the federal government or would you call them the cartel? I would say that they're one and the same. <laughs> um, I mean, generally, your next door neighbor. Okay, let me throw it like this. If you saw a fight next door, would you go get involved or would you grab your video camera and record it? If it was uh, happening I, next I, door, I, people outside in the yard fighting. I'll get my video camera. Right, but yes. then you saw federal agents agents come up and start shooting on those people that were fighting. What would you do then? You know what I'd do. 
I know what you do, but see, you're saying even you would treat the federal government different than you would just a group of people. And I consider the cartel just another group of people. I, I appreciate the militia's work, but they are a group of us. They're just like me looking at a neighbor and the neighbor, like Mule was saying, the neighbor decides to go down there and fight the thing that's happening in his backyard. That's his choice to stand up. But the cartel on the other side are also just a group of people. They're not the Mexican government. They're not the federal government. And we will literally treat the federal government different than we will that group of people. Okay, okay. So let's put it in this perspective then. The fucking Mexican army or some of the Mexican police or whatever, either the feddies, the federales out there, the fucking the Mexican police or the Mexican military, which has already been known to shoot into the U.S., kill some of our militia. We're not talking about the cartel. We're talking about uh, uh, the police or the military, basically, of Mexico. Well, when that those helicopter, that helicopter, those helicopters, whatever, flew across the border, they put that shit on mainstream right away. Yeah. That was a top story. So, yeah, I think that even our mainstream was treating a government entity, whether it's a Mexican government or our government, a little different than they do just the people down there fighting head to head. Yeah, and my answer to that is, you know, for those that are on the border, I don't live on the border. I'm not even close enough to get to the border within a week. You know what I mean? Well, if I flew or something, but, you know, reasonable time driving kind of thing. Unless the Russians start coming down. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm closer to the northern border, that's for sure. I drove, I drove all the way from Virginia to Las Vegas in, like, three days. Okay, so three days of straight hard driving, right? But I live in fucking central Illinois. My kids got school. I just had a grand... Another grandson, you know. Well, so, we're talking. We're just talking in hypotheticals. Anyway. Okay, but here's the deal: if you're getting shot at by the Mexican gov, by anybody across the other side of the border, shoot fucking back. Yeah. Right. But, okay, no, okay. I guess my question is: better yet, if you're, if you're getting shot at by anybody, shoot back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they can engage them if they if they if they shoot at them. But my whole question basically is. If there's a, a fight that goes on, no matter where it goes on, if there's a the next fight goes down between us the people and the government or us the people and the fucking Mexicans or however it goes down, how many people do you think would fucking get up out of their seats and head to wherever the action is? Some will, most won't. Most most are not gonna get off their fucking couches, they're not gonna change they'll change their channel not to see it, just like they did with Bundy. Or they're going to find an excuse to put to boo boo it like they always do, right? They're it's always going to well, at their door. It there's something at their door. Yeah, and you can't do shit because of what other people think. That's the whole, you know, we think for ourselves, right? Tony, nobody, everybody was against you going to fucking Bundy and you went anyway. Yeah. You know? So if you see a need and you decide to do it, you're a grown ass man, you do what you see fit. And, but you live with the consequences of that. Which you, you who, who would go on this panel? I'm just wondering. I won't think any less of you. Let's, let's see. Bro Lance is first. Bro Lance, would you head down to the border or wherever the action went if some of your fellow patriots were killed? Basically like a Lexington and Concord happens, bam. Would you be at the next engagement personally? Just yes or no? And it would have to be a percentage. Just like anything that would happen. If I fall off a bicycle, I'm probably not going to go to the emergency room. I get in a really bad car wreck, I'm going to go. One or two of my friends go down there because they chose to go down there. They're in a battle. They're fighting. It's like the next door neighbor thing. I'm probably not going to get involved. I'll pull out a camera. I'll, I'll let other people know. But then 30 maybe percent, 30 percent of my friends are dropping off and, and getting in a battle like that. That's probably when I'm going to head out, yeah. Now, you talk about a government entity, if it's the Mexican government, I'm going. If it's the, our federal government, I'm going. If it's Canadian government, I'm going. You know, the, the ones that are meant to protect society and keep it civil, if they're not doing that anymore, there is no civil society. Okay. Yeah, I'm riding with uh, him, so he's got to <laughs> Chad, Chad, uh, Chad Lilly, you're next. Basically, like... Yes, no, and, and what, Brolance, basically, how he did it. Uh, 
honestly never thought about it, but <clears throat> but on the fly here, I would I would have to assess the entire situation. Um, some things, as bad as they are, are a mute point, meaning you can you know run against an army with a sword or a stick, uh, and you know it's just gonna <laughs> it's just gonna it's a mute point. You know it's it's admirable, but it's a mute point. So I would have to assess the entire situation. Um, I'm of the mindset that this is all according to a global plan that we shouldn't have been buying into for the last 40 years. So while these things look like they're happening, you know, in real time, I think this is just part of a plan, uh, and it's not going to stop no matter how many people are standing on the border or anywhere else. Gee. <clears throat> uh. If I were at the situation where I was needed to go and back my friends up and they needed me, yeah, I would definitely go. Definitely. If they had the shit under control, you know, then I would have to look at things a little bit different. But if I was needed, absolutely. All right. Uh, whoever the next green dragon is that's muted. <laughs> Kansas artist. Or Kansas. Yeah. Well, then that makes that makes you next, uh, Russ. What do you think, Russ? Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. I'd need support, but I'd love to. I'd love to say that I'd go. Uh, definitely be scared, but you know, I'm not in physical shape like a lot of you guys are, so I would definitely have to make sure that you know my wife would be on board with that and uh, supporting me and a few other people that I know locally, but. I think they're of the same mindset that if it shit got real, that they would. And then, of course, you know, yeah, I'd love to be able to. Um, I like uh, Roland's, I think, his answer on that. You know, you got to – it depends on uh, how many and, and what exactly is going on. But, yeah, if I, if the shit's getting real like that and uh, the people that I'm, I associate with here locally are on board, yeah, I'm on board. Mules. <clears throat> well, I mean, you said the Lexington Concord moment, so that means against the government. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm balls to the wall, right? Against uh, the cartels. If if I'm needed, then I will answer the call. But somebody has to call me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if it's against the government, the against a government, whichever one it is, I'll answer the trumpet's call. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, you your hypothesis is a little iffy because you're going because there are multiple versions of it, right? So you can get the yeah. cartels, you can get the cartels mixed with the Mexican government, or you can get our own government. That's our why Roland's broke it down probably the best because he did all the scenarios basically. <laughs> he always does. Yeah. But, yeah, but he was a yes on all of them. There's Rebel. Rebel, what, what would you do? What's your, what, how do you feel about it? Well, I already had this happen with the Bundy Ranch, and you know how that went down. The wife said, you're not going. So, you know, if she says I can go, I can go. If not, then I'm not going. But, you know, <clears throat> this, is, this is all, you know, uh, great and everything, but I want to change the subject since it's my chat, and I want to know what you guys think about uh the U.S. Marine who's still rotting in a Mexican jail. Meanwhile, you know, the borders are wide open and uh, everybody's allowed to come in and we'll give them health care and housing and food and clothes and uh, Obama phones and every other damn thing. What say you? I have a response. How many people would it take lined up two by two to walk across the Mexican border to that prison and get him out? And why aren't we doing that? I mean, we can't surely cover the whole border, but we can walk two by two or three by three or four by four or six by six or eight by eight or whatever, you know, down there to that prison and say, this is our man. He's coming home. We let enough of yours in. Give ours back. We let the wrong. We took. We already picked up the wrong man. That means going in their arm, though. Man, not necessarily. Be better oh, not. Oh, yeah. the fucking Mexicans will shoot you down. Good. 
I mean, front lines, a bunch of you are going to die, but mainstream will surely cover that. No. Yeah, that's something that we can't. That's something that we should be able to take care of. They'll, they'll, they'll say that fucking a group of uh, skinheads went in to... They'll shave oh, all of our know. dead bodies. <laughs> they, that's they, a situation. They walk armed. They're definitely going to have a negative story for you. Well, who that's cares? A... Hey, fuck Mexico. I mean, let's be honest. Mexico is not our fucking friend. Anybody in this panel think Mexico is our friend? Because they're not. Never they have. Well, Tam Tamarusi well, isn't either. Wait a minute. <laughs> that's, it, that's ignorant talk because Mexico is a border country to us. So it's not fuck Mexico. It's we've raped and pillaged Mexico. The things are, I mean, we're helping, we're, we're how many countries are we fucking financing? Hmm. Good question, Rip. So you can't tell me that we can't help out our border country and help them get clean water, help them fucking, you know, uh, help them to help us? Come on. I, I understand that, Reb, but them fools are so fucking corrupt that if anybody did try to do anything, that, that place is so fucking, it always has been, and now it's totally fucked. So what do you do? You just got to cut off the infection. I'm not saying we can't do some trading and shit like that like we've been doing, but as far as the talk and, that's coming out of the people coming across the border or whatever, them not stopping people at their southern border, I mean, they're allowing these motherfuckers to go thousands of miles through their shit to come here. So I, yeah, that's what Tony, they're not, they're not making those decisions. That's our government making those decisions. The, our government runs all the other governments except for the ones that we go to war with. Those are the governments that said, no, nah, we're not playing ball with that. And then we invade. We take out a dictator. Then we get another dictator. You know what I mean? That's so right. whatever happens in Mexico is what our government wants to happen in Mexico. Same Congratulations, Chris. Doesn't mean it's right, though. No, absolutely not. And I think more to I think more to what Tony's point is is that we have a serious gang problem. We have yeah. a serious uh, uh, race racial uh, situation going on with the gang problem. What the fucking MS-13, Red? I yeah. mean, that shit's getting fucking out of hand. Is that different in, in Detroit, though? Yeah. In our, in our own country? I, yeah, but our, our crime rate is fixing to go up so fucking crazy here in the Southwest. I probably wouldn't doubt everywhere, but the Southwest is going to be is going to be bad. And I think yeah. that, you know, that might be a way for them as crazy as it seems, you know, they'll make it so bad here with all the crime and shit. They'll say guns aren't working and that they need to ban guns because Southwest, we're still heavy loving our guns, you know what I mean? That's California. <laughs> hey, welcome, Chris. Did you have Thank a problem getting in, brother? Big time. I could not get in. Yeah, What's Tony up, blocked you. Fucking Tony. Wow. Uh, that, that's what happened to me. I, I tried to come in like 20 times. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Wild Iron Horseman, sorry, man, I guess there's issues. What do you think we should do, Rebel? That's what I was fixing to ask. What's your solution, Rebel? Your Rebel Solutions, right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm Solution, so. Yeah, uh, so I know. I spelled I, it wrong I, in one picture. Well, he's, he's probably done a video on it. It's in his camera. He'll get around to uploading it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm disgusted. That we have a uh, a marine sitting in a Mexican jail, but yet we're sending planes and trains and automobiles to take any any uh, you know immigrant from anywhere basically um, to get on the government tit, but yet we got one of our own rotting in a jail, and nobody cares. I've I'm the only person that I ever hear talking about. <laughs> So your rebel reveal problems, not rebel solution. <laughs> no, you know, I, I really thought there was a there was a biker group that were going down to the border to protest uh, his release. I thought that would gain some momentum. I know the Pete Santilli show was also in tow, and um, I don't know what was accomplished. I don't know how it fizzled out, but if somebody, you know, organized something. 
I would have to get on board with that immediately. You know, I mean, we got a lot of bad things going on, but how can people go out and protest all over America this immigration situation, but we can't go protest this this poor Marine who's in in a Mexican jail? Yeah, dude. But I mean, rebel, they they don't give a who's like fucking screaming in the middle of the forest. Don't know who the fuck cares about protest. The Mexican people definitely don't give a fuck about us protesting, and our government could give a fuck less. They'll come in and mark off an area where we can stand in and yell. How long has he been in there now, Rev? 107 days or more. Well, hey, Rev, look, you know, got kids. the fact that we don't give a fuck what we do to our veterans, right? For the past 15 years almost, we've been asking kids to go die, fight and die in these fucking forts. And waving that goddamn flag everywhere, right? And yet when they come home fucking damaged, what do we do? <laughs> we put them into the VA system and they die on fucking waiting list. So, you know what? He's not on the VA. He might get better health care in that Mexican prison than he would going to fucking John Hopkins or some shit. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, they come home anyway and they're automatically a goddamn terrorist. Called a terrorist. I mean, Jesus Christ! You go out and fight for a country, come home and be called a terrorist. Real nice. So I don't have an answer what we should do about the guy on the border because it's more than just one man. You know, the the man in the in the prison in Mexico. Well, you know, hell, I'm real sorry. I wish we could get you out. Why isn't our government standing up to get you out? I have more questions than answers on that. And if I were hit, you know, I bet next time anybody thinks about they might have guns in their car, they're just turning around. Fuck though. They'd rather get a ticket than get around, you know, than get sent to a Mexican prison. Hmm. So. There was no way to turn around. They had those uh, cement I'd barriers up. Once you, once you get past those, you're, you can't turn around at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've never been. Last time I was down the border, it was way different. So, down at TJ. But. Busy. I could be wrong, but from what I understand, once you've already driven that far, it's like a toll gate. You're already there. You're already in their country. Yeah. And I know it's like 50 miles from the border where that uh, checkpoint is. Yeah. But so you have they, count that, they count that somehow Mexican territory. Yeah. I <clears throat> throwing that shit in reverse. If but I can I throw know. in a little uh, of my two cents since I live out here towards sure. where it happened. Uh, once you get there, you got about a half mile. It gives you about a half mile before the entrance. It gives you the option to turn around, and if you don't turn around before then, you have to enter Mexico. Right. So he couldn't turn around, or he went too far before he remembered he had his guns with him. I couldn't tell you. I don't. I, you know, from what I heard, is he went too far and didn't know he couldn't turn around because he was new to the. Uh, San Diego area. Okay. We turned around. When I was in Coronado, I did the same thing, but we fucking turned well before that mark because I wanted to check it out, but we were getting close and close, and I was like, nah. I mean, there's a big sign that says last chance to turn around. So Exactly. Okay. And it's the same you guys way remember. In the Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Chad. Go ahead. Uh, it's the same way everywhere. It's the same way in Nogales. There's signs that say, hey, you know, last exit before entering Mexico, or they've got them 10 miles in advance as well, letting you know. Well, he obviously wasn't trying to hide anything. I mean, he's the one that came out and said, I have guns in the trunk. Most yeah. of the time, an American going into Mexico, they're not going to search it. It's when you come back that they usually search it for drugs and, you know, fireworks or whatever. But going into Mexico... There's, if he hadn't said anything, there's a good chance they would have just let him gone through. Yeah. Why haven't we done any? Why have we let a hundred past days pass? Why? Why? Why haven't yeah, we done it? Where's the John McCain's and all the veterans in in you know the Senate and the Congress? Why, why isn't there an outcry? You know, oh, even been I, there longer than a week. That's right. Oh, what about the dead Border Patrol? Oh, mm -hmm. wait a minute. What about the Benghazi, the, the poor Americans that died there. Oh, it doesn't matter. Now, even though I don't agree with him with very much, right? I don't, I don't agree with this guy very much, but uh, even Bill O'Reilly is on the side of the guy that's down there. I mean, he's, he did the petition. He, he's 
calling for an all-out boycott, whatever that'll do. But, I mean, he's been on top of it a little bit. I don't know about recently because I cut my cable off, but... <laughs> be a boy God. We should just go there and fucking get our boy back. That's that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Why, why is it so hard for us to go there and get our fucking ask, boy back? Is he technically in the United yeah. States, or was he technically in Mexico? You guys remember that map? He was technically, the he was technically in up. Mexico. Well, technically, by the actual line on the border or by that 50-mile mark, where they set the border. That's the Constitution by, free by zone. Technically, he, he pulled up, by technically, he up. By technically, he pulled up, and he was there past the par past the portion of America to where the Mexicans stop and check you. But don't what happened to No Man Left Behind? I guess that's know. just a, a funny slogan to put on a fucking T-shirt or a poster. We got crews. We got crews of five. We got crews of five that are killing hundreds of tallies every fucking day. We can't go to Mexico and get one one guy. It's because the person in charge doesn't want to. Right. There we go. He didn't want to go to Benghazi. There we go. There, and he there don't there want to go. go down to Mexico. There's the answer. Well, I there, think they're yeah. teaching him a lesson. Mr. Dictator. Well, Bo Bergdahl is now back in active duty service. Yeah, he, he should have been against, shot. Yeah, he turned against his crew, <laughs> and he's in active duty service now. And I don't know if that's just so the family can get paid. Well, um, I saw a thing. I saw a thing on Facebook, and I'll bring it up here. You know, we traded five terrorists for, for right. Gitmo for that one guy. Can't we trade, you know, a hundred thousand illegals for one fucking marine? Nope. We should have shot all fucking six of them. All six of them should have been fucking shot because this motherfucker is going to be a problem. He dresses like them. He eats like them. He fucking speaks their language. He didn't want to fucking well, let helicopter and come home. On that whole thing, yeah, that? they should have droned them. As soon as they got the guy back and they released the five Gitmos, they should have fucking droned them all. He didn't but, speak to his parents. He didn't speak to his parents to when he got home. Who's? I mean, that's nor that's not normal. You go ask fucking Marcus Luttrell, fucking lone survivor. All he wanted to do was talk to his mom when he got back. That's all he wanted to do. Hell yeah. Especially if you've been kept captive. Not right. He's not right, dude. He's not right. We're, this is going to be a problem. He is going to be a problem. Yeah, they dropped him out of mainstream, though. The next Donald Hassan or whatever that guy's name was. Send his, ass, send his ass to Mexico and get our boy home. This sucks. What's that? So how come this thing doesn't tell us how long we've been on? Because they took that feature away since the last time you were running one. What time? What time is it? Right now? Oh. Oh. Stinger with another sting. We've been running for an hour and fifty-two minutes now, Reb. That's right. it. That's it. Dang. It's only nine o'clock. Dead horse. Would be priceless though, G. If they'd send Bergdahl, they'd say, "Hey, you want That's you want to get back in the group? You right. go down to Mexico and you get our boy back. <laughs> exactly. People after you. Now you uh, pay the debt that that you owe to society and go get our boy." <laughs> and I'm serious when I said no, that. No, that'd be badass. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy you you listen because that's what needs to fucking happen. We sent enough people after him, and, and a few died. Right. So if he dies along the way, oh well. <laughs> yeah, we lost fucking, we lost plenty of fucking men and women for this fuck. Okay? So I have his ass, put his ass on the front line. Right. Yeah. Put his ass on the front line. Cause this we don't even need a trial. No, you don't need no one of those trials. They're fake anyway. <laughs> you want to prove you're loyal? Put your life on the line. Go get, get our boy home. home. Go get your brother home. Yep. Go see what you can do. I like what, co what confuses me is everyone and their mother can break out of Mexican jail, right? Like every other uh, drug cartel has broken out of prison multiple times. I don't know, Steve. He's a U.S. Marine and he job. can't break out of the prison? Come on. He tried once, I heard. Oh, did he? Yeah. Please. And they beat the hell out of him. Chris, I keep not, trying. Not they stripped land, him dude. down naked and threw him in a cell and made him stay in there for like a week naked. 
You stay in Mexico, Chris. You get locked up and you go there, dude. It's not like you're becoming home anytime soon. That's you're what I'm saying. Like, not if to I mention, got, usually if the I guards, up, usually the guards are part of the cartel anyway, so it's a little bit easier to right. escape when your guard is part of your gang. They're all paid, dude. They're all fucking paid. Those Mexican guards are all fucking cartel fucking... I just look at this like this. It's, I'm so fucking happy I didn't get fucking hemmed up in Jamaica when I fucking knocked out fucking Brit, Brit Boy. I'm so lucky I didn't get fucking hemmed up. I can't imagine getting locked up in Jamaica. All right. So, uh, is there anything else pressing on anybody's mind that we should cover before we head out to greener pastures? What are we doing after time, brother? Are we going to be done with life? No. Closing shop, Reb? Hey, it's Reb's night. He wants to shut down early. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm asking. Gotta go one more. I don't know what, I mean, we talked about the Ebola, we talked about, uh, you know, Brothers in Arms and uh, Mexican prison, we talked about the, the border, we talked about the militia, I don't know what else we can, uh, we can really touch on that won't uh, affect I said, speed of a guy, Reb, is we're running it tonight. You're right, boss, after chat time. Yeah, Reb, it's on you, bro. <laughs> It's your world, baby. We're just living in it. You know, you know what's going to happen, right, Reb? A couple people are going to come in the after chat, and that conversation is going to be so good. You're going to go, damn, why couldn't I put it on live again? That's what I'm trying to get to. It's a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Reb, if you want me to, brother, I can, uh, I'm just throwing it out there. If you want me to shut her down, I can shut her down. No, I'm, I'm on here as a dragon. It's no biggie. Uh, I know. You know, I'm your wingman, brother. I'm going to do a shout out. I mean, maybe the. the, the the chat, they probably got better topics and better things to say. Well, how about you go check it out? You, you're the dragon, baby. You're the boss. Yeah, baby. You're the yeah. boss. Okay, if I, disappear, if I disappear into the interwebs, don't blame me. We got someone to go out and look out for you. Don't worry. We got plenty of men to go out and look out for you, but don't you worry about that. I mean, I don't know. I think we kind of, we kind of, I think we weeded out, honestly, the, uh... Fine, you go play. Fringe, the fringe uh, people out of the mix. Every once in a while, you got to, man. You got to say something really provocative to realize that, oh, yeah, that person really doesn't believe in freedom of speech, do they? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if someone that they're listening in, if they have questions for us, or if they want to, you know, I bring was, up a topic, yeah, I suppose, something different. I was trying to pose questions that I think that people should. You might, you're gonna have to think about these decisions soon. I mean, you're gonna be sitting in your house with your family, and you're gonna have to fucking make that decision. You gonna, what are you gonna bug in, bug out? You gonna go to war? What are you gonna do? That's a good. That's a good thing. Okay, well, let's, 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 that's a let's good go thing. ahead and let's go ahead and discuss that for a minute. I don't know in what context you're you're referring to, but let's just say there becomes a a serious Ebola outbreak in the United States. What do you do? Get masks. And you make sure you wear it everywhere you go. Okay, well, wait a minute now. One at a time. So Kansas is saying get some masks. Okay, well, uh, is that so when you go to get gas or you go to work or you go to the grocery store, you have a lessened chance of getting a... Uh, of getting it infected? Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. Well, Take they, some vacation uh, days and go on a camping trip far, far away. The top, the top doctors on that shit were saying like the easiest way to not get Ebola is to be like a super uh, clean freak. Just you know, what I mean, be bleaching all your shit. Like if somebody comes over your house, better, hold, better bleach that whole motherfucker down. <laughs> Well, let's just be thankful up. that it. Uh, let's just be thankful that it's unfolding in West Africa. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's been a thousand. They said there's been a thousand killed, more than 600 people. Um, well, let's put it this way: the CDC was talking about how air crews can might be able to catch it and bring it over. Right. right. That's part of the thing that that HDP shared. 
right? The other that uh, Rebel Re shared today. Well, they're Has bringing. Anybody ever watch the movie Outbreak? I mean, that shit spreads. Exactly, and they're bringing that fucking scientist or whatever over here. I'll find the link for the story. They're bringing somebody who's infected into somewhere, and is it Georgia? Somebody said or what? Um, I think it was Georgia. They're bringing the children. I believe it was the wife and children of the doctor. Uh, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Uh, <clears throat> Sonoran Desert Prepper that the. the commented on it. I mean, you know, in, the question was, if if there is a major outbreak here in the United States, what, you know, how, how do you handle that? Do you try to bug in? Do you call in sick to work? Do you, what precautions do you take? And how long will it take for them to say, well, listen, the only way we can guarantee your safety is if you come to these predetermined locations to, you know, get A, B, C, and D. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you already have some sort of plan. That's right, because ain't no fucking way I'm going to any place to get A, B, D, and C. Fuck that shit. Look, oh, it's not, dude, it's not even, it's not even one. It's fucking multiple. Plane leaves U.S. en route to transport American Ebola victims victims to Atlanta Hospital as Hero Doctor gives up the only dose of experimental treatment to his colleague. So they're bringing like a whole, I don't know how many, it doesn't say, but they're bringing more than one person at least who's infected. They said if Ebola came to U.S. it probably wouldn't get very far. Come on. That's what they say. We're not talking about some. It's like you gotta watch uh, HDP's video. Well, hold on a second now. Come on. Of course they're gonna say that. Right. Of course I know. I'm not agreeing with. It. I'm just telling you. Worry about it. And, you know. Of course they're gonna say that. Yep. Well, they don't want to create a panic because then people might actually be thinking, well, what about our southern border? Why isn't that secure? <laughs> That's what I mean, man. They, they're setting everything up. It's just a fucking house of cards. You know what I mean? They're setting everything up. and There's nothing, nothing other than being prepared ourselves that we can really do about it. You know what I mean? Because, trust me, if, if all of a sudden Ebola get, becomes open here in the United States, they already have in place a plan to shut down the interstate highway system. Remember how they shut down the transport system on 9-11, right? So they've known how to do it since at least then, right? And don't think they can't shut down all the comms for the same exact reason, right? Oh, because they shit. don't want people... <laughs> Come on, enough. Go on the other way. They don't want people, uh, you know, knowing enough to be able to do anything about it, right? And they're going to use use of, well, we can't have this spreading around the country, so we got to shut the country down. It's, I was going to say, it's two people they shipped over here, but if you look yep. at that I put right there, you, you could see what they shipped them in. And well, Tony, you, like we talk about, you know, for you, it, it sucks, because you live in Raccoon City, right? Four ways in or, in or out of your city, and it's easily controlled, easily shut down. Right? Yeah. What would happen if they claim that there was Ebola outbreak in Vegas and they shut it down? Now, Vegas is an international city. People come from all over the world to go to Vegas. Yeah. They're better in the place for it to be or to spread, right? Because yeah. they come from all over the country to go to Vegas, too. Yeah, they're sending they're them to Atlanta and they're going to transport them one by one at Emory University Hospital. And who was it? Joel, uh, not Joel, uh, Jason Brumsfeld in one of his bitching at me, which wasn't, you know, you're fair enough, brother. I listened to your opinion and I, I listened to what you read, what you wrote. And he pointed out that the incubation period is like three weeks before you even start getting sick. So. And again, that's, go, that's discussed in that video that uh, HDP shared and then I shared it with Liberty and Firearm Social Club. That's the thing. That's why this can turn into a pandemic, like, right away, because people don't realize they're infected. Most normal people won't 
go and intentionally expose their their friends, family, and acquaintances. That is not the case with this particular disease because you won't know. And in fact, they're telling doctors, you know, hey, this is what you need to look out for because there's other things that mimic this. Yeah, and doesn't it start with like flu-like symptoms? Yeah. One of, uh, one, one of the guys received blood from a 14-year-old boy that actually lived and survived from Ebola. Hmm. Well, there's going to, even with a pandemic, there's a percentage, you know, it doesn't kill everybody. It just kills right. a lot of every, a lot of people. Exactly. You know? uh, the young, yeah, the young should, boy is... I think that shit kills everybody, Neil. <laughs> I think well, it kills, there's always going to be some people that live, even if it's just 1%, you know? It's, it's only a 90% kill rate, I think, 60 to 90%. So it's yeah, not everybody. So you're going to have survivors. That's crazy. You know, and you got to look at it cold-heartedly. I mean, come on, like you know, <laughs> and at least in a way, because it is a numbers game. You kill off sixty to ninety percent of the human race, leaving most of the infrastructure. Well, that ten percent, if they can get their shit together, they can have a good. You know, there can be a future to the human race. Anybody else watch The Walking Dead and think, wow, that's what freedom is because we're not free in this country at all. And in order to get our freedom back, we need a uh, Walking Dead type scenario to actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one with the zombie AR, so of course not. Mm. Uh, things in pieces in a box right now, but yeah, okay. Yeah, but you got a Zombie Hunter magazine, so that will right. them off. Yeah, but Kind of thing is the same is you know, but I mean, different other than the fact that you got the corpses walking around instead of just laying in the streets being piled up. Uh, and that is more freedom than anything that we have now. And then the Ebola. I mean, there's also there's when you have a virus going like that. There's also the carriers that don't die. Also, the ones that yeah, the typhoid yeah. Marys, right? She never got typhus. Passed that shit around like it was fucking you know party hats. Exactly. <laughs> The ones that don't know they got it and they end up spreading it. And they're bringing two people, according to the, the thing I found here, it says right, the Tony two Americans, Dr. Kent Bradley, not shown, and Nancy Whitbull are serving a joint term in people in Samaritan Earth. And let's see, let's see what the thing says. Um... Well, they got this guy, like Tony said, coming into Atlanta, Tony and G, and everybody was sharing with, you know, it's coming into our country. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't even hide shit no more. They just fucking put it in the news, and then they don't. Nobody gives a fuck. Oh, they're bringing all the uh, with the bull ad. Oh, that's they, not. That's nothing. They said the survival. They said the survival rate's about forty percent. Is what the survival rate is. There you go. Forty percent. So you know there are going to be some survivors. You know what I mean. There's five types of Ebola. Wow. That's that's not good either. That's scary. Five well, with that note, I'm going to bail out on you guys, so I'll check you all later. All right. Have, have all a right, good night, buddy. Have have a good night. Take it yep. easy. Thank you. Thanks for the. Uh, the arrogant bastard ale and the the great jerky. Thanks for yes, that. thank you for my jerky. It's all gone. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the jerk. Oh, that's right, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, it was like uh, seven oh, pounds boy. of meat. Seven pounds of meat down to a pound and a half. So, fuck y'all. Yep. <laughs> it's only so much I had. I'll we love you, bro. Later. Have a good night, bro. All good, bro. I understand. Okay. Yeah, right. Pretty soon, everybody's gonna want a piece, and everybody's gonna get a little piece in an envelope. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. You get to try one of my jerkies. And right. everybody's gonna get Ebola from it. Alice <laughs> <laughs> humor. Alice humor. Oh no. You <laughs> could get Ebola, you, you could get Ebola, and it wouldn't even be that surprising because the border is wide open. I mean, well, you won't get it from Stinger's jerky because it's so damn hot it kills everything. <laughs> there you go. Wash it down with some arrogant bastard ale and you'll be all right. The alcohol will kill it. 
I love fucking hell, um, Kansas's video. If you guys seen Kansas video, take a look at it. Man. It's funny as shit. He loved that jerky. And then I knew it was getting hot on you, Kansas. I knew it was getting hot. You're like, oh, yeah, I like. It ain't hot. I'm, uh, uh, Sweat drips are dripping down. Uh, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. I know it's catching up to your ass. Well, see, now tomorrow's video is going to be even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait till he sees a uh, couple of weeks, buddy. A couple of weeks. Right, can't, can't hey. Soprano is what it's going to be. The Ebola topic's probably dead, but one thing I did hear about that is. Uh, 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 they were burying, uh, burying a lot of the bodies. They were burying a lot of the bodies, and you can't kill the virus by burying the body. You have to actually burn it. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but I mean, it'll be around for uh, ever if they if that's the truth. Dude, yeah. you you said it. They made a movie. It was called Outbreak, except for Outbreak had a happy ending. This is. Uh -oh. a this is a real world. There ain't going to be no happy ending. How about yeah. we all say a prayer tonight that we don't find it, see it? How about we just say a prayer right here? Time. I'll say a prayer. and. Well, how do, you, how do you think the people feel when they're getting ready to send their little ones back to school and they so, know so. that they're going to be sharing classrooms with foreigners um, that don't speak the language, haven't had adequate screening, under the circumstances. It's fucking scary, uh, Rev. I wish my boy I wish both my sons could be in a fucking bubble. I swear. I wish they could be in a bubble. I get a panic attack when they go swimming or fucking whatever. It's I don't know, man. I mean y'all understand. Tony understands. Rev understands. Yeah. Well, we're the, we're we're all very understand. small percentage, so well, how right. do you think people will feel? Well most of them probably won't give a shit. They won't even know. That's the sad yeah. part. The ones that do know, like you, me, and everybody here on this panel, we're yeah. the ones that are going to be flipping the fuck out, and they're going to be like, why are you flipping the fuck out? We're going to be like, well, did you see this? You know, It's just yeah, right. it's a game. <laughs> it's not just our lives that we're worrying about because we got others. I mean, I got a two-year-old and a six-year-old, man. I mean, phew. only God knows. Well, what I'm six kids old, man. level, but I mean, they're still my kids. But yeah, the bottom line is, what I'm trying to say is just the age. Is like, how, what the fuck are they gonna see when, when they get older? What type of life? What type of environment and economy is gonna be there for them? Who's, you know? Yeah, I know. What exactly. diseases? What, what's gonna be out there? You never fucking know. I don't like Tony said. I don't want my kids living through this shit. If we're gonna go to war, let's do it now. Let's fucking. You uh, pop up and do it. Yeah. We're not going to have a choice one way or the other, right? I think in a lot of ways we are at war. Every day we're at war, bro. Every day. And how is it going to end? We're going to we're going to end it. The people are going to end it. We're going to tear this motherfucker down. Only in the movies, G. Only in the movies. Yeah, but a lot of that I shit feel like I'm in the movies movie. really happens. <laughs> Actually, what was that? What was that Denzel Washington movie? Play video games and sit behind their computer. They don't care as long as they got their little box in front of them. Right, right. You got that right. And what was that movie with Denzel Washington and Tony Shalhoub and Bruce Willis? Took place in New York. Siege, right? Where they locked down Brooklyn. Boy Scout. No. Oh, I didn't no. watch that one. I missed that one. What, the Boy Scout? No, no, the won't. Anyway, that's what I see our future as. But nobody's stopping him. Nobody's standing up to the Bruce Willis guy. Mm. I don't remember the name of it. Think that's it. just the thing, you know, we never, We don't know what's going to be here in our future, you know, for the grandkids. And, uh, and we don't, you know, we don't okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, let's I know take it a step about. further. Uh, Hold on, let's take it a step further. So... Yeah, obviously we don't know our future, but right. we do know our past. Are we better off today than mm. we were six months ago, a year ago, three, no. 
I don't really think six months a year goes that much of a pass, Reb. I don't really think it's that. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to talk about Let's say five you, years ago, ten years ago, am I better yeah. off than I was ten years ago? Yes. Fuck yes. No. Uh, Fuck no. I would. I was way better off ten years ago than I am now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was better off. That's what I agree with you. Ten years ago, fuck yeah, I was absolutely. I was making money ten years ago. I was making a buck thirty, fucking. But, you know, that's also yeah. just you know, nobody in America is doing as well except the top one. No. You know, they keep doing better and better no matter what the rest of us are feeling. Yeah, from fucking 1998 to 2007, I was making eighty to hundred a year, no less than eighty a year. After 2007, phew, I yeah. took like a fucking 40, 50 percent fucking cut, man. Then yeah, I went, yeah. then I got fucking went to the hospital, and I fucking was there for a year, and yada yada yada, and I fucking spent. She spent everything I had, and I had to start from zero again. You know? Yeah. Now we ain't got no way of going up. It's like you, the, the, now it's hard. Yeah, it's the, you can't hard. Do the American dream no more. You can't. No. The the American dream's gone. I'm lucky if I make fifty grand this year with all my taxes and all that shit. I owe them twenty five. I cut a check for them for almost twenty three stacks. But you know when people say, "Oh, you got to make six figures to be rich," and blah bullshit. Because yeah. I make six figures. I make six figures, and let me tell you something. That I I'll be honest. I still live check to check, man. And I fucking make six figures and all that's bullshit. Because well, the more money you make, the more you make, the more they American take. Living. It's no longer the American dream. It's the American living. If you can like, live. Like Reb said, we fucking, we're at war every day. Every day. They just have different names. So, so, there are people up there. And look, dude, you didn't even make the number of thumbs down. You only got seven. Fuck them. Rev, you only got seven thumbs down. That's they're probably just they're the ones that are just mad about the joke. Well, I had twenty five the last time I went on. What's that? Last time I was up, they ran one of these. I got twenty five thumbs down. Yeah, you only got seven, Rev. You're slacking. Okay, well. You know, you asked asked this, to do a shout out because I'm about ready to kill this deal and go. You know, let's do it, boss. No. All right. Well, Sonora Desert Prepper was out there. Gated Red was. You got 34 people in there still. I'm uh, Gated Red's fuck. out there. Okay. Rebs, Rebs in charge. Hands out there. By the end, the party goes on, man. I'm just let's, one man. Hands out there. We're all behind you. Make a move, baby. And Make yeah, a move. Okay. Now Juliana Moore just shared something okay. about how the USA is. <laughs> Establishing Ebola quarantine centers, right? So, yeah. What do you think those FEMA camps are going to be used for? What do you think is going to be an excuse? Like Tony well, said, make them Thanks over. to Juliana for sharing links. We appreciate everybody sharing as much information as possible. You know, that's what it takes, man, so we can be informed. and it takes all of us to do it. Yeah, well, she's she's putting the link out there, so I'm calling her out. Thank you, you know. Okay. I you know let us you know let us all share as much information as possible while we Amen. still have this particular tool at our, our disposal. You know. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Six to nine bones out there. Croatian Forge, America died. WP forty five. Optimus Android is out there. That's what we said. Green Dragon is not one person. It's all of us. Save American Liberty. Kills Quantum Heart Logic. J Watt. J Watt. Caught up. Yeah, I am all caught up. I'll Down get you a link in the after chat, J Watt. So those are the ones still in the room. Just to let you know, and there's 33 people watching right now. I give 10 minutes to. To, if they want in to say something, and if not, then we close her down tent and leave her. Make a move, man. Make a move. Make a move, Rebel. Make, Make a move, move. man. Come on, you, baby. 
So Tony, did you get a chance to watch that video? What's up? Gloria's leader. Did you get a chance to watch that video that I posted out there? Uh uh. No, we go find it. It's the one that uh, HTP shared a couple days ago, and uh, it the it Ebola goes, one. Yeah, it, it shows you the devices. I've seen that one. Yeah, I sure. Oh, you saw that one. Yeah, I saw it. It shows you the uh, the devices, what they look like to test for chemical and biological, and if you see this around the area, yeah, it's towards the end. Yeah, so if you see those right. trucks rolling through, or you see those helicopters with shit like it, pay attention. Pay attention to your surroundings. Yeah, and but I, what could they be gas? I mean, they were flying really low, but what I would could suggest they be everybody start low? wearing gloves and uh, and uh -huh. <laughs> masks on your face. Hold on, hold on. Thirds in here to debunk everything. <laughs> what, what do you He's got to defrag it all. What do you got for us, third? What, why? Just because I joined, am I here to debunk some shit? <laughs> <laughs> if you're our NSA guy. I mean, Kansas didn't really contribute a whole lot, so there's not much to debunk. <laughs> oh. Damn. <laughs> That's, Ouch. That's bad news. I was Kansas counting on your debunk. I, to be honest, I, I just got back, so I, I wasn't listening, so I'm not sure what you guys have been talking about all night, but I'm sure it was all bullshit anyway. No, no, no. no. All, <laughs> of, all the above. It was all wrong. Ebola, Ebola, what do you think? Real shit. Before Rebel Ebola shuts it thing? down. That's fucking brilliant, bringing somebody into the States with it, isn't it? That's two what of them. Saying. I just won, or two. two. Is, it, is it more than one? Yes. I misread that article. I thought it was just the one, uh, the one doctor. And it's no, another doctor. Well, yeah. they gotta get it. They gotta get it into the population somehow. Yeah. They just want to explore. So much in Georgia. Is that where they're going? Yeah, they're going to Atlanta. Right. You come in and agree. That even scares me more that the NSA agrees. Damn. No shit. No the, shit. Walking, the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, anybody? <laughs> yeah, right. right, my favorite NSA guy agrees with me. Now I'm really scared. No, yeah. I, I think, I mean, I mean, we've mentioned this before. My wife's in the medical profession, so I, I've got a different perspective on it. It's just one of those things that I have, I have an irrational fear of uh, death. So things like that just creep me out, so I tend to not do a whole lot of reading on them. <laughs> okay. Irrational fear of death or just, a no just you know, a normal fear of death? Because guess no, what? No, no, I have... Well, this obviously would fall under more of a, uh, something to legitimately be fearful of, but like I don't like taking my kids to the zoo because I'm afraid they're going to climb out of my arms and fall in the bear pit. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> I really do have an odd, an odd thing with that. Used to be, that used to be called good parenting, sir. Let let them climb into the bear pit. Take <laughs> <laughs> this can of go there and feed that bear. The, the the funny thing about life is we all, if, if we're here talking, we all have one end game. You know, we're all going to be equal in death because we're all going to die. Yeah, I don't, I don't call it an irrational fear of death, personally. Some sooner than later. Yeah. You, you know, if you're know, you from doing stupid shit, then you're not going to let your kid go bungee jumping over a bear pit, are you? Right. You know? <laughs> so, there's, a, there's a song where he's he's talking about the government <laughs> killing everybody, and he, said, no, he says, nobody's going to miss me because you're all coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. <laughs> uh, with the whole Ebola thing, I don't. I, I think if you're not concerned in some way, then you're something wrong with you. Not normal. You got to be concerned about it, man. There's, there's, that's just too much. I mean, they it kills so fast. But like third said, man, there's people out there that don't give a shit. Like they just think they're Superman. Like they just don't care. It's 
duct tape, plastic, and a lot of bleach. Yep. As long as they're making their money and they're screwing whatever and their life is fucking hunky-dory, they don't want nothing to slow it down. There'll be a magical shortage of bleach coming up soon, probably. Yeah, well, what better way to bring in a martial law? Yeah. But I get to talk about, like, with all the, the medical type stuff with my wife and shit, so I always get my fill with that, so. Dude, how? Like, true this with, comes around, I'm just kind of like, eh, no, I'm not too, I'm just not going to listen to it. How true would the movie Outbreak be, though? Remember, they fucking <laughs> fucked martial law. That fucking people tried to leave the city, they fucking didn't shoot them. I thought they shot them. That's some fucking crazy shit. Oh, isn't there some new TV show out about a pandemic or something? Oh, no. There's always a show somewhere about pandemic or something. Let's say it's like the, some people in the Navy or something, right? They're on a boat or whatever. I saw a commercial or something like that. Yeah, there's a pandemic. It's called pandemic. Or, or contagion or something like that. No, no, that's the no, that's a that's that fucking uh, what's that shit bag actor? Uh, You're thinking Matt of Damon the uh, in that. There's a TV show that's oh, the last shit. Yeah, that that's, that's what it's called. Talking. That's about a pandemic or something. And it starts out in New York or something like that, and then goes goes awry. It comes off of a plane. The Ebola is too is too much of a downer on a Thursday night. <laughs> Not if you have the right medication, my friend. And that's one thing I don't, as far as, you know, any kind of preparedness that we do around this house, that's one thing that I don't touch. I let, my wife does all the medical crap, so I don't know what we have and what we could possibly survive <laughs> or anything else. Well, hey, you missed it. Uh, I, I took, I pointed this question to everybody, and you weren't in yet. How do you feel about sending your kids back to school or daycare or whatever, knowing that, you know, they're going to be surrounded with people who potentially could have all kinds of things. I'm lucky for the most part that uh, my kids go to private school, so it's uh, their classes are very, very small. So uh, it's very, um, very limited. There aren't a whole lot of students in the class, so I'm not. I don't get overly concerned with um, uh, the the passing back and forth of, of whatever with the uh, with the kids. I think uh, the biggest thing we've we've had to deal with as far as school is uh, they had a, a mice infestation one time, but thankfully we fucking avoided that nightmare. Right, right. Well, what about then uh, at the pediatrician or you know any other place that kids gather that. What do I feel about them going to the doctor? No, just that now that the border's wide open and there's, there's no uh, there's no screening process. And the, like, like I said, my wife is a nurse, so I'm, I'm lucky in the fact that anything that, that goes on with the boys, I mean, she unless it's something serious, we can pretty much take care of it here at home. Yeah, well, Ebola is not something you can take care of at home. Well, well, well I'm, I'm not the thing with her being a nurse. at the moment either. And with her being a nurse, she's going to have more of a heads up than anybody, right? Because the healthcare workers will hear about it through either their grapevine or postings from shit like the city. <laughs> and if she's smart, she's going to pull the plug then and say, I'm not ever coming back here again. And third, thank God you have all those preps, you asshole. And we, you know, don't throw anything at me. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with third and my wife, same thing. She's a nurse and the stories that I hear it's just crazy. Yeah, but as far as as far as setup when it gets too bad, right? When it starts looking like you're not gonna be able to pull the plug anytime soon after that, pull it and go. Yeah. You know, get home to your family, fuck everybody else. 
Sorry to say that. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. Blood is thicker than water. Well, there's there's two ways to look at that. If you have a loved one who's in the healthcare system, it's quite possible that they will be first responders. You know? Yeah. That's and what they're not going to be told everything they need to be told. We're not being told right now everything that, that we should be being told. Well, dude, when oh, they start true. changing the pattern of what they're putting on to deal with the public, you'll know quickly. Right? Yeah, that's always the case, bro. When it goes from putting on gloves to talk, you know, to deal with people to putting on gloves and masks, they're going to know before we do, right? When it goes from that to being putting on, you know, fucking body condoms, well, it's time to pull the plug and never show up there again, you know? That's so morbid. What? <laughs> body condoms. <laughs> Well, you know what I well, mean. It's full. Well, it, it sounds funny, but who here has chemical biological suits? Yeah. I, bet I, don't, I don't. I don't have NBC gear. You know. <coughs> who the fuck does? I mean, other than people who are way better prepared than I am. I do got masks. Because we've been thinking about, you know, how much shit comes in. And if something started, like, in town or something. You know, you hear about it, and because we got a kid at, at that works at the uh, doctors, and we got two that's going to be nurses. So hopefully, we hear about it. Plus, my my son's police dispatcher, and he dispatches all out to the uh, first responders. So, well. The chemical and biological suits really aren't that expensive. You know, boots, gloves, duct tape. I mean, uh, they're easily had through surplus avenues for anybody who's inclined. Well, I plan to buy some gloves. And get some boots. This may be hard to answer for a couple of you, but if there is an outbreak and your wife is a nurse, do you want her to stay at the hospital and help out, and try to mm. stop it, or do you want her to come home? Come home. Come home. And be with her kids and her husband. <clears throat> My wife and I have talked about that. If, if she that knows that there's something going on at the hospital that, that she could possibly... Uh, that could be serious if she brought it home. She knows that uh, we've already discussed that she, she'll stay at the hospital. I guess I just wonder for those, sorry I'm eating. <laughs> I guess I just wonder for those that need treatment, if everybody goes home, who's going to be there to help those that don't know anything about it? Last well, time I checked, she was needed. I mean, she's needed, then yeah. <clears throat> the last you time I needed. checked for at least the bowl, <clears throat> there isn't a whole lot of treatment. No, there's no treatment. Nothing. So, oh, I mean, time to go home then. With the incubation period being so long, you know, wow. chances are it'll be too late. What? Yeah, and you know what? I mean, I don't know how do you hold. That was like the Katrina thing, right? when the cops and most of the first responders went home and finally took care of their own people, abandoned their posts, basically, how much blame could you give to those people? You know, how accountable do you hold them when they had to go take care of their own? Nobody else was going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the answers to that because you're right, you know, bro, Lance, about how... You know, if all the first responders bail out, well, what happens to the people who need their help? You know? Well, you know, you're kind of screwed. That's what we prepare for, right? Just in case we get screwed. Yeah. That's what it was making me think of. You need people around you that you know personally that have those skills because I don't. I wouldn't blame them. I wouldn't put any blame on them whatsoever. If I was in that position and in that hospital, if I knew I wasn't bringing something home to my family... 
I would come home to my family. My family would be first because blood to me is thicker than water or whatever. Right. But if you're if you if you if you've gotten it and can and you're, you know you're a goner, are you gonna go home to your family? No. Well, no. No, I would make a way where they could see me through a glass wall, I guess, if that were possible, but no, I'm not going to kill call. them. You know? Okay, well, this this gets on a topic that I've wanted to talk about, and I don't think I have, believe it or not, in a year of doing these. I don't think I've I've asked you guys and the people out in the, uh, in the chat, you know, do, does your family personally have a emergency plan in place? Whether that be, you know, we're going to meet here, or if this happens, we're going to do, you know, A, B, and C. You know, do you guys have a safe room? Do you have a meeting spot? Do you have a natural disaster prepared plan? Yada, yada. What say you? We have a plan, but it's like more or less general. We haven't really decided how many of our kids, or if we wait for our kids, how long. They, for them to come back to us, you know, it's, but we do know that we have a, you know, we like a 24 hours from time to say it's to, and then we're locking the doors, you know. Well, I know I have a plan, and the kids are going to follow through with it, and they know, they understand the gist of it. And we haven't practiced it like I've seen other people do and shit like that, but we have had conversations about it. And I know what the hell we're going to do, and they're just going to do what I tell them because they're my kids, and they damn well better if they want to live through this. If anybody's going to fucking shoot them, it'll be me. So get your asses going and do what I tell you. <laughs> no, but, yeah, no, I've talked about it with them, you know. We have some things in place. Wow, third not types away. Sorry, I'm on, I keep forgetting to mute myself. For me, I've never made plans that have worked out according to the plan that I made. And Kansas can attest to that because he's 30 <laughs> minutes from me and I still can't get over there. But I think more important than a plan is to know all the potential outcomes, to know the routes, to know the terrain, to know what you're working with, to know your equipment, to know, you know, uh, how you do this, that, and the other in all different types of circumstances because I think the plan constantly changes based on, I mean, we don't know. We don't know all the scenarios that will come. <laughs> 100% with you there, man, because every plan goes to shit the second you put your foot out and put foot to it. You know what I mean? Now, you mentioned trust, Mule, about, you know, that's that's one thing that we can do with our family and our kids. If they trust us, you know, that falling backwards, catch us type trust, mm -hmm. if they trust us like that, we'll be okay, they'll be okay. And if we can teach that to them, because there's so many circumstances when just in a split second, you know the right thing, but if you take 10 minutes to explain to them why it's right, you're all dead. Yeah. They need to follow you right then because you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's just mm -hmm. something that's built up in a family or a relationship. That's why we always talk about local, 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 because those relationships you have, you know, you can build them as you're going through adverse shit, but, you're not, you know, it's much easier to build before you go through the adverse shit. You know, before the gallows humor becomes something that's on a daily basis. You know? <clears throat> and that's... There you go. You got an idea rather than a true plan. You know? I have plenty of ideas. We'll see how it goes for each situation. Because, I mean, what happens if there is an outbreak and, with, and they close down the roads and they, they put up roadblocks on all the fucking highways and all the major intersections of roads, you know, closing off each town? Yep. You know? So what happens then? What do you do then? How do you get around then? Gotta you know, have a get around that well, plane, you know how to ride on, how to, how to take, you know, 
next left, right, left, right, whatever. Go across this back field, whatever. Get the fuck out of your area. Do you know? Do you know where to cross underneath a major highway rather than on the major highway? Yep. You know, I've worked at places where they didn't allow you to have your cell phones. There was no outside, uh, you know, no radios, no um, TVs, no outside information. And it would be very difficult to get any information if something were to take place, a terrorist attack that didn't directly affect the area, um, you know, an outbreak, uh, you know, whatever, major fire, yada, yada. So I suggest everybody have some sort of minimal communication with your loved ones about, hey, if something were to occur, you need to meet at this place or make contact, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. What about you, Chris? What's your plan? If you're still out there, you ain't said much. I'm out here. Just listening. You know, realistically, if, if it became an epidemic, I don't have kids. I don't have any of that shit. I'm heading to the woods. Grabbing a bunch of buckets and running, huh? Buckets and running. And I'm going to go ahead and bring along my poison stinger jerky. I'll be good to go. Right, right. <laughs> you'll, be able to, you'll be able to pop those rivets then and really load those mags. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but well, yeah. he's not down now. Now he's a man. <laughs> you know, I just hope it doesn't get as bad as uh, as the swine flu did. So. Well, it would be worse. It'll be worse. Uh, could be. Could be. Well, I just hope it doesn't get as bad as swine flu. Well, well I, I, if it, if Ebola gets into the United States and people start getting it, it'll be across country within three, within twenty days. Within twenty five, within uh, pretty much a month's time, it'll have wiped out ninety percent of us. Or, 60% of this. Yeah, go watch, uh, what's that Stephen King flick? Outbreak. Outbreak. No, oh, the Stephen King one. <laughs> Not Outbreak, the other one. You take the religious shit out of the Stephen King one and... Oh, you're talking about, yeah. The Stand? Stand, yeah. There you go. The Stand. And that's what that's really what you end up. You don't get zombies wandering around like Walking Dead. You get just a lot of dead. Yes, that is VHS. Actually, I think the best way to pull out your eight packs while you're at it. That's how I roll. <laughs> I think the best way to put it is the one with uh that old um. Oh, shit, what's his name? Press Prince of Barrel Air did that one with him in that town by himself. Oh, Legend? Legend. Legend. Will Smith. There's another, there's another Stephen King, like, epidemic type hey, movie. Hey, you back, brother? Part. Huh? Yeah. You check the, one that had Morgan, the one that had Morgan Freeman in it and Tom Sizemore. Actually, it's walking. It's walking. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, Dreamcatcher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we want to go apocalyptic, we got to talk about the road. Yeah. Yeah, the road's pretty good. I was talking to Sarah, dude, and she just. The horror some story right disturbing there. Disturbing shit, dudes. Like, disturbing oh. shit. <laughs> like, can you imagine? She say that Ebola might be here in Kansas. What does this make you think when you got when you got all these guns and when you all these people run out of fucking ammo? All right, go ahead, G. Tony done. My bad. No, that's all right. I just was telling Kansas, I he was saying it might hit here. Never know. I think it's already here. That shit's here. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you that. To Georgia. 
right? <laughs> no, it's here already. So I don't know. Have they been stopping flights from Africa? Or are they still coming into our country? Because... I don't know. I, I think it's still the same. I think they're still having our flights in from Africa. So, yeah, I mean, we know that guy from Minnesota was got stopped, and if he hadn't been held up in fucking Nigeria, he would have died probably in air, right, on his way to Minnesota. All right, the link's been set So what about all the people that were on the plane with him to Nigeria? that transferred with them heading to Minnesota. You know? It says that uh, Pan, Pan African Airline halts all flights to, I guess, Western Africa. That's only like one airline or whatever. Is that the main airline that fly, flies people to and from Africa? I don't know. I'll post this link on the inside. Ah, that's just fucking great, isn't it? Getting to be cocaine and bitches time again. <laughs> oh, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. That's why we be. That's why I'm here. We eat our spinach, baby. They canceled all the, I guess, like the soccer games. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck, man! Sometimes you don't even want to think about it, you know, because I got a new grandbaby, right. and look at the world he's walking into. Son of a bitch! anybody. Don't go near my baby. Bam! <laughs> like if you got think about if you have small kids to where you got to carry them around or they're not able to carry any weight or a gun or something like that, you know what I mean? You're going to be carrying gear, plus you're going to you're gonna have little kids. Yeah, my uh, my wife's brought up the, the idea of trying to uh, to have a girl, and then every time she brings that up, I just kind of push it to the wayside. If you come over tomorrow sometime, bro, Lance... I'll take you out, get you something to eat. Yeah. He's been talking about that stick oh, for a long time. Shoot, you're talking on a Friday. I can't come over on a Friday. <laughs> How about a Saturday? Saturday's got a better potential. Anytime after 3 o'clock, probably. Okay, how about, well, come about 5 o'clock then. We'll come about 5 o'clock on a Saturday? Tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Saturday? Yeah. Tomorrow. I'll talk to the wife. I'll talk to the wife. We'll see if we yeah, can work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know she tell you know. Tell him, Kansas, don't sing it. Bring it. <laughs> That's why I don't make plans, man. You never know. I hate to break yeah, people's hearts and not show up. Yeah, well, just, just, just let me know. Just call me. All right. I'll do it. You got my number. Did we lose Rebel again? Yeah, we lost Rebel. He, lost, he popped out just a second ago. So what's the topic? Yeah, Smurf, Smurf and K, I sent you links. What'd you ask for a topic, Chris? I said, yeah, what's the topic? I think we should all talk about what guns we carry for EDC. Ha ha ha. Real <laughs> funny, aren't you? You bastard. That's a hey, when's the next Wilman chat? Hey, Chris, what gun would you carry if you lived in a free state? There you go. There you go. <clears throat> if I could carry for EDC, I would carry an M&P shield. M&P shield? Not what your girlfriend, not what your girl would carry, what you would carry. Yeah, what I would carry, M&P shield. Oh. I'm I have not shot one of those. I've heard good things about them, but I've not gotten my hands on one yet. Mm -hmm. Give it the Glock 21. That's all you need. I don't care. I've not. I've not shot a whole lot other than my freaking Walter lately, man. I'm having a. I'm currently having a love affair with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd carry a. I mean, I'd probably carry two M and P shields realistically. <laughs> so. Here, I carry two blades, Glock 21. <laughs> 
That's okay. my everyday carry. I lived in the free state. Carry. My everyday carries a, a double barrel super soaker, so back the fuck up. See, I <laughs> nice. see every man, woman, and child should own a gun. And I then, keep my super soaker in my trunk. <laughs> yeah. Pop that shit out, you're going to get wet. <laughs> yeah. We banned those. I well, put we acid banned super them. We ran, we banned super acid. soakers uh, three years ago in California, so I'm not allowed to carry no, those. No, they did not. I got the super soaker 500 volts. Right on. <laughs> There's no way California can be that fucked up, Chris. No, no, no. I'm just joking around. Because like, <laughs> making fun of me, I've never obviously. heard about this, but... I almost believe it comes from I believe I was born. I believe it because it, let a kid go out with a gun. They'll shoot your ass. Yeah, yeah. there's been stories, dude. That you don't have to have a gun. They'll shoot yeah. you they'll shoot you with an airsoft rifle. They will a with a water gun, dude. You got an airsoft I mean, rifle? They'll shoot you. Go get yourself a fucking yeah, I'll play, I'll play shit that in a Some of those airsoft rifles are very realistic. All right, guys. One at a time, please. One at a time, because it is just 15 <laughs> people swap. talking on top of each other. It's never fun. I got a <laughs> Did Rebel split again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fucker. I'll come back. I got a super yeah. The only reason we're still on is because I'm in here. Right, right. Now we lost G. That's fucked up, Rev. At least I stayed for my entire chat. Right? <laughs> Third year's the man. So are we calling it a night since uh, we're losing people like flies? No. Who do we lose? That's up to Kansas. We can just enjoy each other. I mean, just sit and enjoy. I mean, we, we lost G. Be... We lost. It looks like Neil's no longer talking anymore. We yeah, lost. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Well, he was just saying something. He said he'd be right back. Mule's the man. Talk about how shitty the Indiana militias are. <laughs> there's an Indiana militia? There's, there's a number of them, but they fucking suck. Balls. Take dues and do nothing. No, they don't. Even, they're just, they don't even take dues. They're just fucking. They okay. The commander of the the largest militia in the state, which is still rather small, which is surprising considering Indiana's actually you know pretty pro gun, pro freedom and stuff. You'd figure some of the militias would be a lot larger, but the commander of the uh, uh, the largest militia in the state. And Nat Geo did a show a couple of years ago. Uh, it was called uh, Militia Rising or something, I think is what the show was called. Uh-huh, yeah. that will, that's what it was called. Go back, watch that show. The Indiana, they featured the, the Watchmen group from Indiana or whatever. Well, the guy that was in charge of that group is now the guy that's in charge of uh, the Indiana Volunteer Militia. And what a fucking clusterfuck that group of clowns is. Oh really? Yeah. Didn't he uh, throw? Didn't the commander get thrown down a hill and sprain his ankle or something funny like that? Yeah, like uh, everyone that they feature, at least on that television show, was uh, easily a buck fifty overweight, except for like two guys. <laughs> What's up, Galen Long? I just wanted to throw that out there. Galen showed up. How you doing? Says hi to everybody. Hey, Galen. What's up? So did the uh, thousand uh, guards, National Guard, did did those ever get sent down there? Supposedly there was supposed to be a committee of the DOD and the DHS that were supposed to meet with Obama last Thursday and decide whether or not John Kerry or whoever the fuck could, or not John Kerry, the guy down in Texas Perry. could. Did Perry. they ever go down there? No. Perry's still calling them out. They're supposed they're supposedly getting. Getting the troops together now, and they'll be heading down there soon. Was the last thing I heard. Now I could be wrong, because I have mine as much. Damn. But yeah, they're supposedly going to be on their way. Right. The way I understand it, but I don't think they're going to do a damn thing. <clears throat> right. Kind of like New Orleans. We're on our way. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, we talked. We touched on it uh, Tuesday night because I had mentioned it earlier in the chat about the militias and stuff, and uh, reports starting to come out about militias actually being down on the border, and some of the pictures that uh, are popping up are guys that you certainly don't want representing the militia movement and fucking quote unquote patriots at all because they all look like fucking hobos. Well, I was also hearing that they were that they were uh, putting in some pictures from Bundy into some of the. Now it could be the media outlets doing it, or it could I don't know. You know. What yeah, I'm there saying? was a lot of that when the story first broke about militias going down there. There was a lot of uh, uh, pictures that weren't actually from uh, the border at the time that were being posted. Uh, but as far as I know, these are new. I, I could be wrong though. These are supposedly new pictures, and you got kids in uh, just wearing fucking Call of Duty masks and shit. It's like, if you're going to go down there and pretend, you know, pretend to represent a militia, at least try to look, profe you know, semi-professional. Right. But they also could be people wanting to hide their identity, right? No, I don't have a problem with hiding. There, there are other masks to use. I mean, this one right. picture's got a kid. He's in, uh, he's like in all black on the fucking border wearing a, like a Cheap ass fucking tack vest, like a zip up tack vest with the fucking Call of Duty Ghost, like that's got the the logo from the Call of Duty Ghost game on the front yeah, of it. Yeah, that I know what you mean. Face. You'd be better off breaking down and buying an anonymous mask. Yeah. Well, you can get fucking uh, those like your anonymous. I don't know if your anonymous masks is like some of the neck wraps that I have. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a long tube that you can pull over your neck. Yep. You can get fucking plain color ones, uh, desert tan and OD green and black and, and just, just plain with no designs on it or nothing. I mean, if you're going to go down there and try and represent the militia movement, you should at least try to present yourself, you know, be presentable even just slightly. So where did you see those pictures? Uh, um, I think HDP shared an article on his Google Plus page. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I'll put it in the chat. I mean, one of my questions is, I know the mainstream media is trying to make us or anybody that's in the militia or if you're a patriot... Yeah, this wasn't mainstream like media, though. That, that's what I was wondering, is if you know those pictures came out from somebody that was a trusted source that was down there or through just the propaganda stream that likes to make us look stupid. Yeah, because they like to make us look stupid, that's for sure. Freaking sick. Well, they made patriot a bad word. They made militia a bad word. Those are the things that defend our freedom. Their freedom. Their very freedom they enjoy to speak what they speak now, and they make it I mean, it's always twisted to be a negative, not a positive. Hell, if you're either one of those words and you're in New York, you get they'll pay you five hundred dollars to come rat one out. <laughs> Did you say five hundred dollars? Yeah. Chris needs some money. I need some money. I'm heading to New York soon. <laughs> Now, Chris, why the fuck would you be heading to New York from California? I mean, it's like frying pan fire kind of thing. Yeah, because that's even worse. That's like... When you're used to the tyranny, it's not so bad. Yeah, you know but you, I mean? can, you can even smell like gunpowder going into New York. <laughs> well, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. For 500 bucks? Woo! Yeah, but you got to find someone to turn it in. Oh, that'll be easy. Yeah, but 500 bucks in New York, you know what that gets you? A hot dog in a cart on the street. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I mean, I do live in California. We, It is the highest tax state, so I, I'm used to the high prices. <laughs> you know, so if, maybe if I was yeah, in, like, Idaho. The highest tax state and the, high, and the second highest tax state with the first highest tax city. Yeah. So. Don't forget, they have gun controls, or lots of gun controls, so there's plenty of people running around with guns that aren't supposed to have them that are, will, will kill for it. Bro, Lance, I just put a link in the internal chat. It's got uh, one of those pictures that I was talking about. All right, checking it out now. From, uh, that's the story the HDP shared earlier about the militia movement coming back from the dead or whatever.
I and saw I that. You'll see the one kid, he's all black, and he's got the fucking Call of Duty get up going. I saw that, and all I thought was I was disappointed they all had fucking ARs. <laughs> they got the 3% flag, but fuck, I guess they can get a couple things right. Yeah, I mean, most of them look, I mean, are dressed fairly appropriately. I'll have to see if I can find some of the other stories where there are a couple other pictures. But that one, and then that particular picture, it's that kid that's dressed up like he's fucking playing Call of Duty that just... Hey, they uh, got a fat boy like me. The last one worked for you, Kay? The one I sent you? <laughs> this new breed isn't playing toy soldiers. Well then, fucking don't wear that shit. <laughs> You're getting very serious about quality control. <laughs> Who's the other green dragon in here? Oh, you? Yeah, I'm trying to send these links out. The motherfucking bastard. I'm trying to get a link out this stuff from decay. I'm thinking about taking off, so that's the reason I was asking. I, that, you know, yeah, I don't want to just leave you. you know, that's why I ran now. I came back in so I could sign in with the right. Uh, Rev was having sure, technical man. difficulties earlier, was he not? Yeah. Yeah. He's having all kinds of difficulties. Yeah, I'll share with you. Tony's in here with me. I don't want to just leave it and, you know, something happens. No, we're good, dude. We're all good. Man, articles like this, just, they screw with my brain because I read parts like this that says the militia movement. And any time they put in a mo it's a movement, is it not a constitution constitutional responsibility? Not, It's not a movement. That, and they say it was ultimately destroyed 20 years ago. What the fuck? I don't know about destroyed, but it certainly took a huge kick in the nuts when uh, Oklahoma City happened. Yeah. It took yeah. a huge kick in the nuts. Well, and just in the PR nuts, right? It's not even like the government actually came against a ton of militias or anything. Everybody just kind of drift, drifted away saying, wow, if that's going to be the representation of us, then we can't be associated with it. Mm-hmm. You know? <clears throat> because Oklahoma, you know, and among people I know, we've had this discussion before, where if that knucklehead, if if that wasn't a false flag, if it really was done by somebody, by McVeigh, let's say, why didn't he do it earlier so that way nobody would have been in the building and no children would have been hurt? You know, well, isn't that isn't there a conspiracy to all that that's getting ready to go back to court? Mm hmm About somebody that was supposedly somebody else who was supposedly involved and like killed and or killed themselves or something. I don't know the whole story. I've not ever really looked like crazy deep into Oklahoma City. I mean, it's, I probably should, but well, if you do get ready to get you know make a new tinfoil hat for it. Because, yeah, it gets deep, man. Yeah. It can get real. There's a documentary up there. Like 9 11, it gets deep. I mean, no matter how you put it, you can go, you can go so many ways. Yeah, you really can with Oklahoma, especially with Oklahoma, because it was, yeah. Well, look at the first fucking, uh, the first. World Trade Center bombing, that one's another one that yep. goes off in all different ways. How did some of the some of the things that got into the country shouldn't have got wouldn't have gotten in without help from somebody in government and didn't get into the country without people in government trying to now, build the, the first the first bombing didn't hasn't the FBI came out and said that they were involved in that? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they help provide support in that. Yes. Like, oh, we made a mistake and gave them real explosives or some bullshit like that. Like, our bad, we gave them C4. We had a, we had a label wrong. 
It was supposed to be clay, not Semtex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know. Sorry. I got my tinfoil hat. It's well used. And that's what you pee well, it starts to weigh heavier. Get you know, get, if you once you once you start looking into the shady dealings of any major government organization or even fucking corporation, it can get dirty fast. You know, and shady shit that they do to get their agenda across. And it is for it's real shady. It gets shady. It gets to so many shades of gray, it's hard to tell where the truth's at. Well, well, that's because, you know, at least according to popular opinion, there is no real truth, right? It's all just somebody's fucking opinion. Somebody's truth. Oh, I know there's real truth. You know. We, some people that deal in the dragon hopefully know, what, know and can see truth when it's in front of them. But, <clears throat> you know... These days, it's all relative truths, right? I mean, it's not even relative. I mean, look at Jones, okay? Alex Jones. A lot of us may not like him. Some of us do. But the thing is, the matter is, he gets on there. He, he has he has proof from the papers. He only takes it out of papers that are already written. All the information he gets, or either from pamphlets that are made by the government, and he puts his, 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 his spin on it. And the thing is, I mean, it's it's a fact. There, there, there's a fact there. And no one wants to accept the fact. Even though it's written, you can go to Google, you can look it up, you can look, no matter. If you look at it, it's right there in front of your face. It's all written right in front of our face. How many times have you looked at a puzzle piece and it took you three hours to figure out where that piece went. That's what I look at all this stuff going on the internet. It's like somebody dumped out a box of 1500 piece puzzle. Some other people figure out what piece goes where quicker than others do. And then, I mean, when it all starts coming together, more people will see the picture. And that's my hope is that we can get this puzzle put together quick enough that enough people can, that momentum thing they call it, uh, I don't remember the word, but you get enough people together at the same time, you can do yeah, something. Everyone takes it on in. But the thing is, we're we're looking at a ten thousand piece puzzle, oh, or a ten million more than that, puzzle. Yeah. And, and 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 there's so many pieces out there, and there's so many just trues. It's like there's another puzzle involved in it. You know what I'm saying? It's not just one puzzle. It's like eight puzzles in one. Yeah. A picture has a tree and it has a house. It might have a cabin. It might have, you know, a deer or it might have a mountain in the background or a lake. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different pictures inside that one puzzle. And just one piece can't determine what part of that picture it belongs to. I mean, that's where your brain has to kick in and put it all together and try to make sense of it. But I know that other people make sense of it quicker. And then when they're trying to explain it to somebody, they the other person, they're basically telling you, I don't see it that way. Well, yeah. I guess they need more of that puzzle put together for them, and each day more and more of that puzzle is coming together, and it's getting in their face to a point where they can't ignore it anymore. This is true. And that's that's where I'm at. I mean, I'm, I'm at the point right now, I get so upset because I see all this shit, and it just, I can't get away from it. And the other day, I just lost it. I, my wife said I, I needed to take a break, and I did. I took about a three-day break. I just watched all the TV shows from way back when. Right and, on. Because you can't control it, right, Ken? So, I mean, you sit there and you watch it all, but you can't put your hand on it. You can't stop it or make it better or... You, you don't can't have no, do nothing for it. You don't have no control over it. You can just and sit there and burn it. Yeah. I'm sure every one of us on this panel knows how it feels when a child's crying. I mean, some of us still have kids. When a child's crying and you can't do nothing about it, you know, you've changed their diaper, you fed them. I, I, all my kids had that colic well, or okay, whatever. Okay, I'll give, I'll give yeah. you okay. yeah. It's sort of like the Israel thing, okay? Now, yes, Israel 
you can take it either way. There's some that are that say Israel's been bad all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. When you got somebody that's a, it's it's a little like a, a it's, it's a little like to me it's like a a um, chess game, a game of chess, and you do certain things for an expected reason for them to, to make the other person do the other thing. And I'm sitting here watching them sit there and blame her, the, uh, Israel for all the kids dying in, it, in Palestine. But yeah, Hamas sets up holes under schools, places to shoot from under schools, under, under well-populated places, and then... Well, Whenever they got to go and bomb them, well, they're going to use anybody that's there as a shield. Well, here's the thing. I mean, and you know, like you said, it's it, you're going to have everybody needs to find out their own information on the situation, right? But if you look at the amount of land that the Palestinians once had and what they have compared to that today, and you look at the size of Gaza, the way it's been shrunk, okay, you'd see why the only place left are populated areas. So anybody who's fighting against what they see as oppression, right, no, no matter how you feel about Hamas, if you think of them as terrorists or whatever, they've been squashed down for the past 40 years. You have to expect them to kick out. Yeah. Right? But you got to remember why they got squashed down the last 40 years. You yeah, got to remember that the they, were, they were trying, Egypt was trying to take over all of it. Israel wants the land. Right, Israel wants that they consider it all Israel, right? Even though the agreements with the British was it was supposed to be half Palestinian, half Israeli, right? Israel said yeah then and says no now. They want yeah, it all. In, in like when Lebanon, when they took over Lebanon, part of it, and uh, I think it was 80s, mm -hmm. they were firing in into Israel all the time, and I mean they were they were slamming them. And Israeli and kids were getting killed all the time. And the kids were, I mean, they were just out walking. It was just, they were... Yeah, like, like, you know, like the kids in Palestine are now, right? No doubt. No, uh, it, so they, I mean, we can always bring it down to the emotional argument of the children, but just as a numbers game, a lot less Israelis die from a rocket attack by Hamas than the same amount of Palestinians that die in a bombing from you know, a mortar attack from the Israelis. But the thing is, whenever you go and they tell you to quit, or, or they're coming, and then Hamas is going to keep buying it, now that's stupidity. What's up, Rab? You need a new link? Huh? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's We're like... We're trying to get a bread back in here. Oh. Rab's trying to get in. Nobody heard your rant. No, we didn't get to hear your rant because his internet crashed. Oh, right. His internet crashed and it's not coming back up. So nobody. Got it. So you had a great rant going and your internet crashed, huh? That sucks. That sucks. Hmm. The NSA gods didn't want to hear it. Uh -huh. He's not even getting these links. These are invites. Oh well, they're good at taking away my room. Oh, yeah. You want to share it? You want to do it again? I'll hold the... Well, well, all I'm saying is, okay, Israel tried to tell them... <laughs> you should go read it again. And Israel told them over and over again. But the same thing, I mean, wow. when they were in Lebanon back then, they fired over. Israel said, fuck you, went and took it over. And and then they, they turn around and they do the same thing again. You don't expect Israel not to do the same thing again. I mean, Israel is about life. They've been fucked over, and they're about, and they're they're in between a little company, and they know if they don't win, they lose by life. And the thing is, they know they got their their little country, and they ain't gonna give it up, and they're gonna make sure people respect it. When you fuck with me, we're going out and fuck with you. Then Hamas sits there and goes fires a few in, and they they're fucking with them. That's all they're doing. And they're causing them to come out, and it's like a it's like a chess game. Well, we're gonna fuck with you a little bit, and you're gonna come out, and you're gonna get the bad bad rep. I'm and sure you guys have seen those maps, though. Straight out war. Can't 
Kansas, those maps, have you not seen them, how much land Israel has actually taken over in I that area? I don't but if they don't want fucked with, Hamas should give it up and say, okay, because they had an agreement to stop peace. Israel went with everyone. Every one of them, Israel stopped firing. And every one of them, Hamas fired in first. All right, but those maps were showing, and maybe they're propaganda. I don't know. They were clearly showing how Israel took a lot more than was theirs. Well, they it's like I said. Back then, eleven when they were in Lebanon, they were firing over. Hamas was doing the same thing, firing over. And the thing is, it's killing Israelis. And all they're do and all Israel does is the same thing every time. They say fuck you, enough's enough. They go kill them and take over the land. If you can't if you can't control it, they'll have it. And that's all they say. If you don't want fucking pushed off your land, don't go poke the bear. Uh, something there's something fundamentally wrong with that though. Yeah, how fundamentally wrong is that shit? I mean, seriously, you, you're I, I, okay. Say, say, say the U.S. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I listen, right? And first, let me say good night for Reb. Reb, say good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out. But also, I mean, what you're saying is so they're following the American plan that we did with the American Indian, right? And yet we all look at that and say that was now that we look back at it in history, we're saying that was evil. And yet we're looking at it happen in real time with Israel and the Palestinians, and we're going, that's okay. okay? Well, okay. If anybody, right. thinks, if anybody thinks that fucking Israel is, Israel is not what you motherfuckers think. Israel is, is, is fucking Zion, and fucking Google that shit, and that's, well, all, you, that's all you know. Night, it's all bad. Good night. Good night. Don't keep them up too late, please. <laughs> He's the boss. He can turn it, him and G can turn it off at any time. Okay, well, I got to go to bed. His voice is starting to irritate me. <laughs> so, but all I'm saying is we, we, they, okay, if they, if they didn't want nothing to happen, then they would make a deal where they wouldn't fire and they would stay. They've tried that. PLO tried that. They tried that, dude. Every once in a while, the, the Israelis, one, one or two stupid people do something, and the Israelis take that as, like, war, and they go against the Palestinians to get more land. I'm not saying Israel doesn't have a right to defend itself. It does. But it takes that, it takes that little bit of a defense way overboard, right? So it's like... It would be like, say, a four foot two guy coming up and slapping me in the kneecap, and me justify using that to justify to beat the fucking debt, beat him to half the debt. You know, well, what I understand saying? what you're saying. And but... it's the same with Israel and Palestine. There's not enough left of Palestine for them to actually do anything, right? But what do the Israelis do? Make sure there's even less left of Palestine. And then what do they do with all that? What do they do with all that now that's rubble? Right? They'll clear off the land, they'll send in settlers, and they'll call it their own. That's not right. right. The shit that we did with the American Indian, right? That what we call the Native Americans, American Indian, whatever you want to call it, right? The same exact thing that we did. And then they'll move them on to a new res, right? And I mean that's basically what the Gaza Strip is, okay. is a res, okay. right? Here's my point, okay? Yeah, okay, that would be fine. But the Indians didn't re-attack us. If yes, we they did. Dude, them. every time they want to, we squash them and do the same thing all over again. You know, I talked to Linda Little Bear. Okay, that shit still goes on today, and what happens is they get squashed. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, I understand what you're saying, but there's just a, I mean, to me, they're, they're on a bigger scale. It's like Hamas knows they're bigger than they are, so they just keep poking at them. And they keep doing this bullshit, and well, okay. in itself. Okay, so let's say let's say China took over Kansas, right? And they move in a billion fucking Chinamen into Kansas, right? And they give you your neighborhood and six neighborhoods around you, right, for where you and your people can live. You and the rest of the people that once lived in Kansas can now live, right? 
every place kidding. else, every place else in Kansas is surrounded by Chinese. They all took over. They took over your shit, took over your houses, they took over your land, took over your farms, all the rest of it, right? You got a six mile strip you guys can live in, right? And you know, so that you, happens that means you're living in China too. But yeah, I'm not no argument, not saying just trying to put it into a little more local for you. Okay. Right? So what happens, to, what, what do you think that the kids growing up in these, because remember, the average age of people living in Palestine right now is 17, right? The median age. So what happens to 17-year-olds when they're growing up underneath, basically living in a prison that they were born into? Do you think they're not going to rage against the machine? Do you think, and the machine is the Israeli government, right? Yeah. So who are, they, who are these people going to rage against that have been under oppression since before they're, you know, this is second, third, fourth generation, you know, oppression. So who are they going to rage against? You okay. Well, Hamas, 90% of them are older fighters. But, dude, you're still talking about since, since the end of, let's say, Let's say the 70s. Let's say, you know, 73, the Yom Kippur War. Since then, they've been slowly getting squashed more and more. So you're talking 1973. You're saying they're older. That puts them at what, my age? So maybe they were born before then, yeah. right? Because, or, or they're ancient. But most of the people living there, because most men who are between the ages of 25 and 30 try and get the fuck out, go to America, go to other countries, and go to their... Small Palestinian contingents in these other countries. That's true. Right. Right. So, who's the oppressor? Who do you really do? You really think Hamas is oppressing the Israeli people? I don't think they're. I don't think they're oppressing the Israeli. Okay, so now flip the script. I don't think that at all. So I'm just saying that. Okay, I would not be. Or tell. I would tell the kids and teach them. That if you cut, if you go out and try to get folks, you're gonna lose what you got. Well, and then you know, you know what? Why are you standing up to the American government? Because if you go out there and poke that fucking big ass goddamn American eagle, you're gonna lose what you got. Nope. But the ninety percent of them, the American eagle, don't believe what he's got it got anyway. <laughs> but what's the what's the difference? You know, if you you know, why are you poking the American eagle if you're not gonna you know if they you recommend to the Palestinians not to poke their oppression. In this case, the American Eagle is taking over the United States. Shouldn't yeah, we poke it then? <clears throat> Go ahead, Brolin. Sorry. I, don't want to I was it. just saying, shouldn't we poke it then? I mean, if it is our oppressor, shouldn't we poke it then? The American Eagle, so. if that's what you're saying. Yeah. Kansas. But it's our country to poke, poke back at. And, and in it's their own. country. Yeah, palace. You know, they they've lost their country to Israeli encroachment. So who else are they going to poke at? The people that stole their fucking land that they say God gave them, and it actually it was the UN and the United States and Britain that gave it to them. Yeah, they gave it to them. They only gave it to them after they 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 lost everything during the war. Yeah, no doubt. But you know what? They didn't. They, the British didn't want to deal with them anymore. That's why they pulled out, right? Mm -hmm. And they left it to a war. And then the UN had to come in and say that we're going to accept Israel as a state. So that's why they did the partition, right? And the only reason why that came across was because the United States stood up to them and said, yeah, we don't want all these Jews coming to America, so let's give them their own place to go. Yeah. So... Well, I can see where you're coming from on that, but I also see where where they got to do what they got to do when it comes down to you're trying to it. I mean, say it's okay. Turn it around on that. What if you we okay? We are the ones sort of poking right now. Okay. Turn it around. We are actually bigger than they are, but we got to come out and fight like we would want it back. Even though so, we don't. But you're telling the you're telling the Israel you're telling the Palestinians not to fight if they want their own shit back. What, you know why do you think they keep poking the bear as you put it? They want their shit back. They want their half of fucking Jerusalem. They want their half of what is now Israel. 
right? Because it used to be Israel and Palestine, but it's no longer Israel and Palestine. They want Palestine back. So you're telling them they shouldn't poke the bear to get Palestine back? But that's not you're what I'm asking. Tell them it's tough shit. And, and like we told the American Indian, tough shit, you ain't getting Palestine back. Here's some casinos. You know, should the fucking Israelis just tell the Palestinians to open some casinos and we'll let it and we'll call it all good? Well, I would say keep them in their own little land and so oh, stay so in, keep them in their own little prison like they have now. It's <laughs> the way I heard that statement too. It's kind of a sad thought, really. You know, just you you lose everything and then you fight for the thing that you want, the thing that you feel is yours, and then you lose more of it based on the fact that you lost the war. That doesn't make sense to me. I mean, because I don't think Israel, well, okay, by, by that definition, Israel is not out there trying to conquer land. But by what we know to be truth, they are. They're taking over all the land. But they, but they said they wasn't coming in to take it over. They but they, they, but they beat, they beat, okay, so you, like you said, Hamas launches a rocket, and they fight back with, let's just say, a nuclear weapon, they wipe out the whole fucking area, and then they say, this is our land. That's wrong. Well, that's, that's like old school shit. We, we should have got past that a long, long time ago. You don't, go, like Russia's doing to whatever over there now. You don't yeah. just go in and just start bombing shit and say, this is my land. Yeah. I'm tougher, I'm bigger, I'm badder. This belongs to me. That's what they're doing. I know that Russian thing played out though. <laughs> Borders were set. That's exactly it, bro. Lance is not what they're you know, and they're doing it under the cause of saying like any like the Muslims do, they're saying, Well, it's God gave us this land. Well, what's the Muslims' excuse for going and doing the evil shit they're doing? What was Christians' excuse during the Crusades? God told us to. God said we could. You know? Well, well see, I'd say a mosque needs to say what they got because pretty oh, soon God, they are coming that. right up through them. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon the, the Palestinians are going to be no more. They're going to be in, you know, they're going to be in places like Lebanon where, they, where they've taken over refugee status and they've they're going to be a true displaced people, yeah. And Israel's going to take over the last most of it, and maybe leave a little tiny strip I until he's going to poke the fucking bear. I, I, I look for a mo or that ISIS to take it over, because that map that ISIS showed showed them owning Israel. I, well, ISIS can hope to own Israel, but Israel nobody's going to poke Israel too hard. Look Let at me what ask you, the fucking Hamas. You re and look what they've already done to Syria. When they don't like something that's going on in Syria, they just go fucking bomb it. When they don't like shit that's going on in Iran, they just go fucking bomb it. If Iraq and the ISIS people start acting their, you know, feeling their oaths, they'll just go fucking nuke them and say, fuck all of y'all. Nah, they wouldn't nuke. Uh, yeah, you right. keep thinking that, brother. I you wouldn't put it past them. They've had they've had the Samson option since the fucking seventies, okay? Now if Iran gets to their nuke thing, I think they would. <clears throat> Israel's had nukes since they made them with the with the South Africans in the seventies. Well, I know that. Okay. I'm not saying Israel would. I'm saying Israel wouldn't nuke because the Israel will nuke when Israel feels like nuking. Yeah, but I have a feeling they might nuke if Iran gets their nuke ability. They'll do, you know what? They don't give a shit about what we have to say or anybody else because, ser seriously enough, they are the big dog on the whole block because they are nuclear power and they have shown they are have been close enough to willing to do it. Yeah. But they fight for what is theirs. I mean, that's and what yet, they do. But yeah, but see, th no, they're fighting to the steal with somebody else's. Okay, that's what that's what this discussion really is about. But if, if you go and think about it, no, Israel was once. Everywhere that's there was once Israel. Dude, they lost that shit under the fucking Romans, okay? We, you know, I mean, come on. They could have gone back and gotten it any time in the past 2,000 years, right? That's right, but they always had some they didn't. kind of... Okay. And they so about had it. If we, wouldn't have, if we wouldn't have given it back to uh, Palestine... We didn't give it back to Palestine. The Palestinians were there... <laughs> 
right, when the Jews lost it, okay, to the yeah. fucking Romans, and they've been there since, okay, and they started repatriating parts of Palestine, which was called Palestine, the whole fucking country, right, when the British took over after the fucking First World War, right, that's when the Zionist movement started doing a back to, back to Israel movement. True. Yeah, it is true. And we and the British stopped wanting to play fucking uh, you know. Well, uh, I understand why the British did, did it. And they backed out, right? And so there was a war going on. And then what happened? The United States, the Jews, and the Americas decided that they were going to support, and they they got the legislature through to be able to support to the UN the fucking Isra Israeli state. Yeah. And they went with the two. They went with the partition of Palestine. Half was going to Israel half the Palestinians were able to keep. And then yeah. since then, the Israelis have been taking Palestinian land. Ever since, yeah. Ever since. But they didn't want to give up the Gaza Strip in the first place. Oh. Palestine didn't want to give up any of their fucking land. They didn't want to give up the first half, and they were willing to do that, and they did that, and then they, they haven't wanted to give up an inch since. And you're, yeah. you're bitching at them for fighting to keep what was theirs. And then you're telling them not to poke the bear. Right? Because Why? Because you, you, you're you supporting Israel blindly because they're, they're Israel and they have the Star of David on their flag. So you think that, you have God, that they have God on their fucking side. Yeah, and they don't represent God at all. They're just, they're fucking bankers. They're fucking... They're another fucking government. <sighs> they're fucking government hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, I understand. I understand a, a Christian, American Christian version of looking at Pal uh, Israel and going, they can do no wrong. I understand that. But that's a blind, that's, that's a belief thing. Not an idea thing. Right, because if you, look at it, if you use the idea of the fact that that doing what, if you if you change the names, if Palestine was doing the same exact thing to Israel, what Israel is doing to Palestine, you would, you know, would you stand up for Palestine? Well, let's put it this way: in Iraq, where ISIS is, and they're destroying Christian towns, right? They're destroying Christian monuments. They're kicking the Christians out of Iraq. And out of any ISIS controlled no, land. They're hitting them. They ain't they kicking them. Okay, killing it. them. They're fucking killing them. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're killing them. They're getting rid of the Christians in those lands. Right? So, right. would you blame the Christians for fighting back? No. Right. Yeah. It sounds stupid to even ask that question, but you're saying the same thing, just flipping the script, right? With the, with the Hamas and with the fucking Israelis. Right? They they poke, they they poke the bear and the bear shit kick kicks the living shit out of you. Yeah. Right. Same yeah. thing. Flip the script. It's the same thing with ISIS and the Christians and Iraq. What I mean was they the whole thing could have been. I I understand what you're saying. They got to attack them because they're angry, or whatever. But what I'm saying is, they could stop the whole thing right now just by stop firing. And so could Israel. Israel did stop firing three times. Even if Hamas stops, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. The 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 Israel wants the rest. They want the rest of that land. They want Palestine out. This was just a reason for them to go in there. Palestine probably didn't even kill those three teenagers. I wouldn't doubt it if IDF or special forces or what the fuck ever kidnapped them kids, killed them, and that gives them a, a perfect reason. To go in there and get them the hell out. Lead the way on that subject, but wow. those guys are sinister, man. I'm telling you right now, Kansas. This Israel, what people are behind? People are behind the whole God thing, and they think Israel represents the Holy Land and God and all that. No, it doesn't. Not well, that. Flag. I'm saying governments are sinister under whatever flag they fly under. Governments are fucking sinister, and they'll do whatever their plan is. You know, why isn't Netanyahu listening to any of the world condemnation against him? Because they don't fucking care. They want the land, right? And everybody bitches about these tunnels. But yet, all these borders to Gaza are closed off. So how are they supposed to get shit into, the, into their country? What's left of it. 
You know, I mean, I hear all the excuses, and all I see is oppression on on somebody else by a big government. And I don't even look at the fucking religious thing, because when you take the religion out of it, it's just oppression. Hmm. No different than what we did to the American Indian. No different, you know. Well, I know what we did to Indian. Uh, we're seeing it live in real time on our TVs and in the interwebs on, you know, fucking Israel doing the same thing to Palestine. And anytime anybody says anything against Israel, people give this visceral reaction. You know? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you can't talk I against that. Israel. That's like fucking blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And if you're against Israel, of course you're a racist, because then you're against the Jews, and that makes you a bigot, an anti-Semite, right? Forgetting that the Palestinians are Semites too. Yeah. Actually, the Palestinians are more Semite than most of the Israeli Jews, because most of the Israeli Jews come from the fucking, you know, northern, uh, eastern and northern Europe. Right? When they resettled after the fucking Holocaust. So they're not even true Semites when you get down into a DNA level. True. Well, I don't know about that. You can check it out, uh, Kansas. It's all here on the nice little interweb tubes, this magic box we talk to each other on. I know it. I'll look it up. <laughs> <coughs> you know. I'm with you on it. I'll just. We'll just leave that one there. <laughs> I don't know, but well, no, that's that. just where you know. I mean, and that's where once you start, like reading, if, if you take religion out of all these fucking all these things, you take religion out of most of them, and you go look at it just bare facts, you get to see the true evil. Once you take out the the religion, the sides, right? Whether it's us, the way we treated the Iraqis, right, or the Afghanis. You know, when you take out the, the, the red, white, and blue flag out of the situation and you look at it just on a cold, hard facts thing, you go, what the fuck? We shouldn't have been over there in that shit anyway. I don't even believe we should have been over there for that. Well, nobody should ever be in fucking Afghanistan other than the Afghanis because nobody's ever kept it. They've all held it for a little bit of time and then left with their tail between their legs. Help destroy the British, help destroy the fucking Russians, you know, Alexander, I mean, you can go down the, I think maybe, maybe the Mongols got a piece one time or another, or the Huns, but it's really been a place that empires go to die. It's been a, been a pain in the ass for a long time. Yeah, well, it's been a place that empires go to die, so, and we're actually seeing ours die, the American empire die. So and we happen to be in Afghanistan at the same time. Blinky dink. Who knows? Yeah. But I'm done. I'm going to see you guys. My wife's sleeping next to me, and she's. <laughs> I'm thinking about poking the bear. But uh, I went to bed. Yeah. We usually like it early in the morning rather than late at night, but I'm going to try. So good night, guys. You can give it a try, huh? Mine went to bed. Who's running the chat? Somebody got to stop the broadcast. Yeah, I would say Purple's not coming back. I'll do it. No, stop it. <laughs>